you know, of all the plants in Plants vs Zombies 2, the walnut has to be my favourite. His sturdy disposition in the face of unyielding agony is so much cooler than throwing cabbages or whatever this is. Plus, he's just a cool looking guy. My love for the walnut got me thinking, can you eat Plants vs Zombies 2 with just walnuts? No, absolutely not. That's ridiculous. But then I thought, can you beat Plants vs Zombies 2 with just nuts? It will be brutal, but that's exactly what I'm attempting to do. Before I get into it, let me lay the ground rules. I can't use any plants other than nuts. That means no sun producing plants will be used in this challenge. No leveling nuts. This wasn't a feature back in my day, and I want to pretend that EA hasn't ruined everything. No power ups, obviously, and I'll be skipping conveyor belt levels. If a level gives me unconsensual plants, I'm not going to make a big fuss about avoiding using them. This challenge is plenty hard enough as it is. That's it, that's the challenge, and it starts as soon as the game gives me access to the walnut. Our challenge begins on the third day of the tutorial. The game even welcomes me with a pre-planted walnut. Now you may be thinking, how do we even win with just walnuts? We just stall until all the zombies are on the screen and then we let the mowers rip. We don't actually have access to the shovel yet, so we just kind of sit around and wait for the zombies to finish their business. There isn't much more to say about the tutorial. We just breeze through it with walnut stall until we get the hot sauce. And man, I miss when Crazy Dave lusting over a taco was the funniest thing in the world to me. Things were simpler. It hasn't been easy, but we finally made it to Egypt. Indeed. Now we're in Egypt, the real challenge begins. Day one is a plant food tutorial, so we start off a pea show, which in retrospect, I could have just shoveled up, but it gets eaten anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now we just lay back and walnut stall until I notice the mowers respawn. That's really lame, but I suppose this is another tutorial, so whatever. Day two is the power up tutorial. Not that it matters, but in order of best to worst, snowballs, electric, fling. Fling's just too much work for me. Here's something I wasn't expecting. Already on day three, I was fighting for my life. This level took me 15 tries to beat. The third level of this game took me over an hour to beat. It's probably worth noting now that I'm not much of a PvZ2 gamer, okay? I mostly played the original game as a kid, so my gardening related reflexes need some work. The issue I was having on this level is I just couldn't stall out the zombies long enough to reach the final wave and wipe everything out. I mean, the mowers still respawn, so this level is actually technically impossible to fail, but I got so close to beating it authentically without any respawning mowers, it became tantalizing to me. I had to beat it with only one set of mowers or my ego would be shattered. I even came up with my own techniques just for this level. Firstly, I had to plant the walnuts exactly when they came off cooldown or the level was impossible. This involved memorizing the lanes the zombies would appear in so I could pre-place the walnuts. Secondly, I used the strat that I like to call edging, where I'd let the sun stealing zombies siphon the sun for as long as possible and then snatch it off them at the very last second, so they wasted their time standing there like a moron instead of chewing on my nuts. Even with these techniques, it was a nightmare, but after 40 minutes of attempts, I managed to clear the final wave with just one set of mowers. Extremely disheartened by that attempt, I was able to beat the stage after just over an hour. Having a level be this extremely difficult on just day 3 is worrying, as I know this is nothing on the difficulty of later levels. But you know what? I think this is the most fun I've ever had playing this game. Trying to optimise something as silly as walnut spam is just stupid fun to me. After this stage, I was very excited to move on. Day 4 was the first conveyor belt level. It gives you nuts, but not nearly enough. Skip. In day 5, we meet the walnut's natural predator, the torch zombie. This guy is to walnuts what the horrors of 2001 was to the Toys R Us giraffe. They make it impossible to stall out the level as he incinerates walnuts with just one touch. This unfortunately makes this level impossible. Except the game is telling me I won because of the respawning mowers. And I did so only placing walnuts, so you tell me in the comments if this counts. Moving on. Day 6 is another boring conveyor belt level. I genuinely find these such a chore to play. Day 7 is a doozy. I initially thought it was possible as it's just regular zombies and camel zombies, which have a habit of forming polite orderly cues, making them no more threatening than regular zombies. But I got done in by the sheer amount of zombies. I can barely make it for a quarter of the way up this one. So is that it? The nut challenge already thwarted on day 7 of Egypt. What hope is there for later stages of the challenge if I can't beat the easiest levels in the game? You see, dear Nut Disciple, our salvation comes immediately after Foul Day 7, when we unlock the cash door, and hidden within the shop resides a plant so overlooked and mocked by the Plants vs Zombies community, they never thought they'd get their chance in the spotlight. Our silver bullet for this challenge, the peanut. Now you see, the peanut is diabetic, because he pee and nut at the same time. Having a plant that can clear chaff makes stalling infinitely better, Plus he has the same health as a regular walnut, so he's not too shabby at tanking zombies himself. On top of all of this, he's just a dapper looking bloke. Now all that's left is to get 100 gems. Look, I'm going to be honest with you guys, 
I had this whole joke planned out where I was going to watch ads until I got enough gems to buy the peanut, and then I was going to speed up the footage, maybe review some of the ads, make some jokes, tell you guys to subscribe to my channel as my own little advertisement. But the absolute state of this game's monetization is shocking. The things this game runs as ads, just for a little bit of profit, is absolutely disgusting. The first ad I got, which I'll heavily blur, is the most aggressive seizure-inducing mess I've ever seen in my life. I couldn't tell you what's going on in this, it was killing my eyes. Is there no filtering process for airing these ads? After this one, I got a create your own anime AI waifu girlfriend, which is just blatantly predatory. Is the money generated from these ads really worth it? What an absolute mess of a company. I just verified my emails and got 100 gems that way. Day 8 starts with a demonstration on how to counter the dreaded torch zombies. And this would be great if I could use any of these plants. Other than that, this level was just a case of holding plant food for the torch zombies. Also, the sun suckers are actually such a pain when you don't have any sun producing flowers. All the sun that drops is so important. Okay, so I rewatched day 9 three times to find anything interesting to comment on. The unfair power of the peanut just makes some of these levels too trivial, but I'll tell you what I'll do. If I can't find a single interesting thing to comment on, I'll instead provide you with some interesting nut facts. Did you know that peanuts account for two thirds of all nut consumption? Crazy. Day 10 was possibly the easiest level yet. I just mindlessly placed peanuts in one. Did you know that cashews are actually from the same plant family as poison ivy? They keep all of their itchy oils in their shells. I didn't even know plants had families. Day 11 didn't let me choose my plants, so uh, we just skipped those. At this point, I was already starting to worry that the walnut had been completely outclassed and made redundant by the peanut. Thankfully, on day 12, I realised the walnut still had a crucial role to play in this challenge. Peanuts have a really slow recharge, and they're pretty expensive for what they are, so walnuts are crucial for buying time for me to get sun and place more peanuts. Day 13 and 14 present a new challenge for me writing this script, as both of these levels are incredibly dull, but I can't keep doubling up on nut facts, so from now on, I'll be alternating between helpful and fun nut facts and devious nut misinformation for you to spread online. So did you know that 40% of the world's almond supply are bought by chocolate manufacturers? And did you also know that cashews are definitely nuts and you only think they're seeds because that Tabusca song lied to you? If they're not nuts, why are they called cashew nuts? Day 15 was our first protection level, which my buddy the walnut kind of excels at. In day 16, I got to borrow a new nut. This guy is absolutely adorable and the best part is he gets this tiny shield when he's given plant food. I'm in love, but uh, aside from that, I can't actually tell what he does. He's twice the price of a walnut and less tanky. He doesn't seem to have any special effects either, he does nothing on death. I'm sure he does something as he's a premium plant, but beats me. I just wish the economy wasn't so bad that I had to rent a macadamia nut. This level was also the introduction of the buckethead zombie, which feels pretty late since we've already seen the sarcophagus zombies, but whatever. One plant food doesn't kill one of these bad boys, so that's annoying. Day 17 was a real snooze fest. It's the type of boring that makes you really start questioning whether a challenge like this will even translate into an interesting YouTube video. Anyway, did you know that people with peanut allergies aren't actually allergic to nuts, but instead, they're allergic to the very concept of nuts? These people should be kept on leashes. Day 18 is a plan your defense stage, and I'm not really sure why, but these were always my favorite levels. This one in particular though, is definitely not my favorite, as we're 50 suns short of having a nice even three rows of peanuts, and we have to settle for this monstrosity instead. Yuck. Day 19 limits us to only using 16 plants. I wish I could muster together 16 nuts in this sun-starved economy. We also have the mold colonies to consider, but again, this is an absolutely meaningless restriction. Despite this though, this was actually a pretty hard level. The zombies are really ramping up in difficulty a lot now. The walnut was a real champ here though, buying me enough time to plant peanuts and holding back bucket heads. I'm not really sure how to describe this. Day 20 wasn't difficult at all, but it felt difficult. Or maybe it just looked difficult. There were so many more zombies than normal, and they got pretty close to the flowers I was protecting. Plus, there was a load of the dreaded torch zombies. But I did it first try, and it wasn't particularly close. Maybe this just marks the beginning of a big difficulty spike. After a very easy day 21, we were awarded with a trophy that grants us an additional 25 cent at the start of the level. This, unfortunately, is useless, as all nuts are priced in multiples of 50, and the sun also gives us 50. The additional 25 will literally never be spent, but uh, thank you, I guess. Day 22, despite being really easy, taught me that using plant food on nuts restores them to full health, just like with the walnut repair from the first game. This is especially important since when peanuts drop below a certain damage threshold, they lose half of their DPS. Peanut damage is already pitiful, so losing more of it can be devastating. And if I use the plant food at the last second, just as a nut's about to be eaten, it's like getting a new nut for free, so this is a cool little tech for the nut arsenal. 
Day 23 was another very large difficulty spike. The zombies are now much more plentiful and the bucket heads in particular are so much more common now which is a pain. This stage also marks the introduction of the gargantuas. These behemoths are tough in normal playthroughs of the game, but here's a gargantua taking on 4 peanuts and a plant food like it's nothing. I still beat the level first try, but this is a very worrying sign of things to come. I guess day 24 is our last challenge in Egypt, the Zomboss is a conveyor belt level. This level was another plan your defense stage, and again, look how rancid this setup is. It was very easy. After smoking the Zomboss with power up, since it doesn't really count, we're done with the first world. It feels a tad unceremonious. I wish we could have done Zomboss with peanuts, but even if we had the option, I doubt it would have been possible. Day 1 is your standard introductory affair. As far as world gimmicks go, this one's a little dull. It's just sort of like, here's a lane or two, they're gonna have less zombies in them. I'm very fond of pirates though, so I don't mind at all. Day 2 was actually pretty tight. I wasn't really expecting such an onslaught of zombies so early on. I remember these bird zombies could fly over plants and ignore them, but thankfully I'm wrong about that. Still, sending so many at once though is brutal. Luckily this level is very generous on plant food, so it was a pretty easy first time clear. Day 3 was incredibly easy. The swinger pirate heard of my day 3 edging shenanigans and decided to finish himself off instead. Normally, if a level was this easy, I'd give you guys some interesting nut facts, but I actually need to address some allegations made towards the peanut. Rumours of surfers claiming the peanut isn't actually a nut, but instead a legume, making it more akin to a bean. Now the way I'm choosing to interpret this, which is the correct way to interpret this, is that beans are now technically nuts, since they're now apparently related to peanuts, which are irrefutably nuts. I mean, just look at these guys, these are prime nut specimens. This cutting edge research done by my comment section may end up proving incredibly helpful for a certain bit of nighttime fun coming up, but I'll leave the beans alone for now. Day 4 is the reintroduction of the Buckethead Zombie. I need to commit a plant food or a walnut to deal with these guys, which is fine. As long as there's no other zombies for the rest of this world that needs the same treatment, we should be absolutely fine. We're gonna be golden. This level was maybe the first time the peanut's tankiness was actually a factor. Up until this point, I've kinda just been paying 50 extra sun for a worse pea shooter. I don't know what was up with day 5, but it was raining sun in this level. It's rare that I get this many nuts on screen. As a result, it was very easy. Did you know that nuts are an amazing source of protein? No really, nuts are very nutrient rich. Peanuts especially are a great source of protein as well as a very rare source of biotin which is a very beneficial B vitamin. Although according to you guys, peanuts aren't even nuts so what do I know? In between levels here, I got an achievement for something I didn't do. Heat up things in multiple lanes. Who, this guy? Day 6 was incredibly tight. I've not had to use lawnmowers in a while, but I had to let a multiple rip on this one. The nuts just don't handle hordes all that well. Also, at the start of this level, there was this really long delay between the second and third zombies, and I didn't want to waste time sitting around with unplanted nuts because of their crazy long recharge time. Which, by the way, from now on, I'll be calling that recharge time the nut refractory period. So anyway, I randomly place a peanut at complete random, and literally nanoseconds later, zombies appear in every lane but the one I just planted in. I'm not proud to admit this, but I actually got outsmarted by the zombies. Day 7 was even tighter than the last. This level introduces the barrel rolling zombies, and these guys are so much worse than the safety torch zombies. Those zombies, whilst deadly to the walnuts, folded to the firepower of peanuts. But these belligerent barrel bigots won't only squash my nuts CBT style, but they're also tanky enough to just ignore the peanut fire. These guys require a plant food to clear or it's over. There's also a weird element of randomness with the peanut plant food, where sometimes it will kill the zombie and leave the barrel, or vice versa. I don't think it will ever matter, but it's kind of neat. Day is just a conveyor belt level, which I'd normally skip over, but look at the freakish way I decided to beat this level. This is the kind of setup that gets you put on a list. Day 9 really exemplifies how underutilized the world gimmick is in Pirate Seas. The last wave in this day had a single zombie in each of the water lanes, meaning the rest of the zombies are stacked into just two lanes. I just stacked peanuts in the two lanes that actually matter and won very easily. More important than boring level design though, I had some golden ideas during this day for some reason. I write down any jokes or bits or video ideas in a word document while I play through the game, and during this level I had a golden idea to try and get a sponsorship with some sort of sweet nut snack brand, or like salted peanuts or something, which I think would make me the definitive YouTube nut spokesperson. So if anyone out there has any connections in the nut industry, you know, get in touch. Day 10 was now identical to the previous day, and thus it was very easy. My only notes on this one is just, quote, currently eating chili and wasabi nuts, they're like, whatever, end quote. Did you know there's a rare psychological phenomenon known as the Mandela Effect? This is where parts of the world population believe peanuts are some sort of bean. I shed a tear for these poor lost souls. Day 11 is our toughest challenge yet. 
I had to use all of my moas to win this one. The saving grace for all these difficult levels is that a single peanut in each of the water column is usually enough to get by. I almost lost to a stray imp at the very end, but this brave walnut gave up his life to save us the level. Rest easy, soldier. His sacrifice earns us the iconic coconut cannon, one of the slickest plants out there. I actually had some comments in the previous video asking me to use the coconut cannon in this challenge. Since he has all the makings of a nut, he's hard, brown, and blows his load at the slightest touch. Whilst it would be crazy cool to get to use this icon, I don't think I'll ever have a spare 400 sun laying around for this challenge, so he's off the team for now. Day 12 is the coconut tutorial, and instead of explaining to you guys the intricacies of the coconut cannon, I want to highlight some of the best comments I got on my last video. The hundreds of uplifting and inspiring messages made me immeasurably happy and has given me such a drive to give content creation my all. I sincerely cherish every single one of them. That said, however, I just don't know if they can compete with the absolute poetry of edging question mark, semen, or the celebrity appearance of the melon pot himself. And I can't even begin to describe the mix of happiness, confusion, and shock when I read, are you French for the first time? But I think the absolute definitive winner of my comment section is the poor soul who commented that they have a nut allergy and have had an anaphylactic shock and got flagged by YouTube for being potentially offensive. Truly, you are an enemy of the nut state and have been punished accordingly. This is the only comment out of like 500, more than 500, that got flagged for being potentially offensive. YouTube is so bizarre, man. Day 13 requires us to produce 2000 sun. I just used sunflowers with a free boost for this, and I know, I know, sunflowers aren't nuts, but I'm not going to end the challenge over some arbitrary challenge on a level like this. The extra sun helped a little bit, but it's still the nuts refractory period that's the real issue here, so I still had to fall back on walnut stool. This level also introduces the captain zombie. He's not a problem right now because of all the decoy sunflowers, but when you only have access to a few crucial plants, those parrots become real vermin. Day 14 is a set and forget level, which are my absolute favourites, and at long last, I get to create a perfectly even four rows of pure, unpregnable, nutty goodness. I pass this level first time by the skin of my teeth. The barrel rollers don't actually instant kill nuts like the torch zombies do. They take almost a full second to kill the nuts. Normally, this time would be inconsequential, but in this level, it allowed me to just stall out the zombies long enough to hit the final wave. If I wanted to play as optimal as possible, I probably should have used half the amount of peanuts in the water lanes and further invested into the middle three. But my smooth ass goblin brain needs its pattern recognition quota field. Speaking of investing, I'm experiencing explosive channel growth at the moment and I've got a lot of big plans coming up. You should consider subscribing to me now while you still have small channel bragging rights. After beating day 14, we unlock the free peer. I know this is supposed to be the nut video and I gotta make silly little nut jokes, but I can't lie. I think the free peter has to be one of my favourite plants in the whole franchise. It might genuinely be second only to the OG walnut. I think it's because I have such a soft spot for goofy character designs, and this guy perfectly captures the charm of the OG pea shooter, but like, three of them. We start day 15 with a pre-planted free peter, which I'm definitely not complaining about, even if he is off centre. This was the first level since I think day 3 of Egypt that I didn't do first try. Unfortunately, my recording software crashed during this one, so I really don't have much to comment on. So, uh, here's a bonus nut fact, I guess. Did you know that peanuts, which we've already established are definitely nuts, are often referred to as goobers? This word appears in many British dictionaries and only kind of sounds like a slur. Day 16 is another level that I couldn't beat first try. You need to defend the spring beans, and these guys are straight garbage. The biggest hurdle this time round, once again, is the barrel zombies, who the beans can only clear half of. After three attempts of basically doing the same thing, I decided to mix it up. First by placing nuts in front of the beans to utilise their pure bulk, but they instantly get folded by the barrels. Then I tried sacrificing lawnmowers in the water lanes, so I could double up nuts in the main lanes. This strat was much better, but still not close enough. After a few more failed attempts, and with the feeling that I can beat this level fleeting quickly, I'm visited by a potential saviour, the gum nut. However, despite having nut in the name, it doesn't really look like a nut, so what is it? This question sent me headfirst into what is probably the shallowest rabbit hole I've ever went down. There is absurdly little information online about what the gum nut is. From what I can tell, it's an inedible seed casing, but does that make it like a walnut situation, or is it more like tree bark or something? Just to be extra sure, I thought I should check what it does in game. Hmm, explodes cutting zombies in its warm sticky substance. That definitely sounds like something nuts could do. Just to be safe though, I'm going to leave the gum nut for now, and I'll consult the council of nut experts in my comment section after this video drops. After a few more attempts, I had a really good run where I finally made it to the last wave. And then it dawned on my empty little head that this is just the tutorial for the spring bean. And this wave is not possible. It would require like three or four plant food for both of these lanes. The only way this is possible if we use the plant food on the spring bean. 
I didn't plant them there, but I'll let you guys decide in the comments if this is a win or not. Day 17 was the third level in a row that I couldn't beat first time. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the difficulty is really starting to ramp up. This level has a really unique objective that you need to kill 20 zombies in 30 seconds. Initially, I thought it meant kill 20 zombies in the first 20 seconds, which would not be happening with the Gooba gang over here. It's a cool idea, but if you've beaten the final wave, then you've beaten the challenge, like, no matter what, so it's pretty redundant. This was also the first level I was really getting violated by these birds, man. Getting your nuts pinched like this leaves you with an entirely exposed lane. I wish I had a cool explanation as to how I beat this one, but I kind of just kept running it back until I got it. It took me well over an hour, though. Day 18 doesn't let you pick your plants, and honestly, it's kind of a welcome break. I've been struggling so much on the past few levels. Using repeaters really shows you how subpar the peanut is. It's kind of sad. Day 19 was another sun production level, so I just had to use the sunflowers. I kind of totally forgot about the requirement this time, so I had to walnut stall the last zombie so I could generate more sun. There was also a flower line to protect, but again, that's small work for my crew. It was a very easy level. Did you know that walnuts can withstand a mind-blowing 10 gigabytes of pressure? That makes them roughly equal in strength to precious metals like iron, steel, and aspic. Day 20 is probably the most bizarre level in the entire game, like this has to be some sort of error. This is another level that requires you to produce X amount of sun, which is weird enough on its own. The game doesn't normally double up on itself like this. But what's even weirder is this level is abnormally easy. The toughest zombie in this level is a cone head, and throughout the entire day, only two zombies went down the water lanes. This really feels like it was supposed to be day one or two and got mixed up somehow. If anyone has an explanation for this, please let me know in the comments. I feel like I'm missing something. Day 21 is the third consecutive sun production level in a row. Why can't I just play with my nuts in peace, man? I don't want to use sunflowers. Anyway, this level was the exact same as the last three, except it wasn't quite as ridiculously easy as the last. I once again forgot about the sun production quota, so I had to dig up all the peanuts in the last lane and put in a walnut to store while I made up the missing sun. This kind of took me back to the days of making a crawler zombie in Black Ops so I can go and gamble all my money away in the mystery box. Good times. I also had to kill five zombies in five seconds, but again, this kind of just happens without planning for it. It's a fairly easy level overall. After beating it, I unlocked my seventh seed slot. Are there even seven nuts in this game? Day 22, plan your defense. This is probably my favorite level in the entire game. It's such a creative use of an otherwise underutilized world gimmick. You're given an unusually high budget with this, and with it, I created my magnum opus, a virtually unbeatable mix of perfect offense and flawless defense. This is what peak nut performance looks like. I couldn't beat the level. In this level, you need to withstand an armada of imp cannons. I laid back watching my force make late work of the imps and successfully held them back to the final wave. Unfortunately, I forgot the lawnmowers can't reach the cannons, so just holding onto the final wave isn't enough for once. And I couldn't even get close to stalling out until all the cannons were exhausted. This level is just impossible. But I'm not calling it fouled yet. I'm going to come back to this when I've unlocked some more nuts, because I've got an idea in mind that I think can beat this level. Day 23 looked like it was going to be a real challenge, because the flower line is so far up, but the peanuts excel in these situations. The level also gives you way too much plant food for it to be a real challenge, and the level's crazy short of any one wave. This would have been, like, impossible though if the flying zombies counted as touching the flowers. Thankfully they don't. Day 24, the final challenge of Pirate Seas. This level is fiendishly difficult. The first obstacle is that we need to protect the stupid bean losers again, and these are some of the flimsiest plants in the game. These narcoleptic letdowns fall asleep after doing the absolute bare minimum, which is awful because I relate to it far too much. The second biggest issue is that we have such a small amount of sun to deal with so many zombies, and the captain pirates make this issue ten times worse. I spent over four hours trying to beat this level. There's this horrid combo of zombies where the game launches flying zombies and swinger zombies at the same time, causing the beans to be triggered and then eaten by the flying zombies. The only way I could get around this was by using plant food on the beans, which I really didn't want to do, but unfortunately it was just a necessity. And as if this level wasn't hard enough, sometimes the beans would spring zombies onto themselves, ensuring that they got eaten. God, that's so annoying. Almost 100,000 people watched my last video, so I need to know. Is there anyone out there whose favourite plant is the bean? Surely there is someone out there that saw all this game had to offer and thought, ah yes, garbage, this is my favourite. It really pains me to say this, but after hours of attempt, this level just is not happening. This is another level I'm going to have to come back to. I know for a fact I can beat it once I've got some later nuts, but it's just not happening right now. After spamming the Zomboss with snowballs, we once again reach the end of another world. 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big herd throbbing cocks wanting to be sucked. Before we get into it, it seems we have a bit of discourse on what I'm considering a nut for the purposes of this challenge. Which is fair, because I didn't really explain it at all. I originally intended to just use plants whose real-world counterparts are considered nuts. 
but this left us with some awkward fringe cases. Before we make any definitive decisions, let's take a look at what it is that makes a nut a nut. I, uh, I don't think there's any plants in the game that can do that. I'm just going to agree with the council of nuts in my comments and say that any plant with nut in its name is fair game. Notably, this means we now have access to the coconut cannon, meaning we can go back and clear day 22 of piracies with ease. That said, I don't think we'll be seeing much more of the coconut cannon because of its extortionate price. This also means we now have access to the cum nut, or at least it would if it wasn't locked behind limited time FOMO garbage. So to summarise, nothing's really changed. Let's get on with the challenge. Day 1 introduces the best world gimmick of the game so far, the minecarts. Most of the world gimmicks in this game serve to hamper your progression in one way or the other, be it denying you any sun, sweeping away half the screen, or harassing you into buying a burnt pea shooter. It already burns when I pee in real life, I don't want to spend 5 quid to be reminded of that. But instead of inhibiting you, the minecarts introduce a new macro gameplay feature to the game that genuinely changes the way you play. We start with a pea shooter in this level, but I must have been feeling a bit daring today because I scooped it up and replaced it with a peanut straight away. After beating day 1, we unlock the split pea, a grim reminder of things to come. Day 2 introduces the Prospector Zombie, and the Prospector mentioned is the ability to eat my nuts from behind. The Split Pea would normally make quick work of these guys, but they're obviously not an option here. They're not actually an issue yet, since on their own you can just manoeuvre around them with minecarts, but it's when they're combined with big waves of zombies they become a real nuisance. Day 3 continues the pattern of introducing every zombie a world has to offer in the first 6 levels and worrying about pacing later. The Piano Zombies are barrel rollers on whatever the drug of choice was back in the Wild West, which I guess was morphine and prostitutes. I like these guys a lot, if you're going to waffle snot my nuts into the ground, at least do so with a little jiggy. Like all of the special zombies in the game, they're absolutely fine as long as they're the only threat on screen and you have a plant food available. We're so doomed. Day 4 is the first conveyor belt level. I've sang the praises so far of the Wild West, but these conveyor belt levels are the absolute worst. I already hate how restrictive these kind of levels are, but the ones in the Wild West have a gimmick where you get to place a single plant one at a time on a variety of minecarts. It's cool in theory, with you needing to look ahead at the waves to plan where you're going to put your plants, but they play glacially slow. You basically have to play these levels out one or two zombies at a time, with stupid intermissions in between each wave, making these levels akin to what I imagine it's like dying of a slow necrosis. Day 5 introduces another player in the Poncho Zombie. These guys are sometimes a book ahead and sometimes not. This gimmick's simple and boring, and I kind of love it. In fact, I think they're probably my favourite zombie in the game. I don't really have a reason why, but if I was to be reincarnated as a zombie in this game's universe when I die, I'd want to come back as one of these guys, because I just think they're neat. Also, when I was a youngster playing through this game, I used to think they were wearing toasters on their chest. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be now, so I guess toasters steal my headcanon. Day 5 had way too many zombies for peanuts to mow down, but it was an easy stall job. Day 6 was an incredibly fun level, but it took quite a few tries to do. It's a plan your defence level, and my first setup looked baller, but got smoked by the piano zombies. The minecarts are really reminding me that I'm not much of a gamer. I'm not very good at manoeuvring my nuts around. Second attempt was much more practical, but no less impregnable. This time it came down to an epic game of cat and mouse where there was one lane left with a lawnmower and one groovy menace that I was trying to seduce downwards with my nuts. Man, that sucks. I ran it back once more and cleared it. I really like this level. Like cow tipping, zombie tipping is best done from the side. Ew. Day 7's another special other than that weird intro. In fact, this one's so dull that I decided to write out the following nut fact in alphabetical order. Did you know that Andar as Brazil, cashew climates, double penetration grown in India, Mozambique not required states such as trees, tropicals, united Vietnam. Day it's a conveyor belt level, but not the ultra slow kind. Plus I got to use the pea pods and I freaking love those guys. Day 9 doesn't let us pick our plants, but it does give us the lightning read, signalling that the chicken zombies are soon to make their acquaintance. I'm not sure how that matchup will go, because even though peanuts can't clear waves very fast, they might be bulky enough for it to not matter. I guess we'll soon find out. We did not have to wait very long at all, as they appear in day 10. And to my surprise, peanuts can actually handle chickens just fine, which is a very welcome surprise. Normally peanuts are of the get bodied by everyone persuasion. Day 10 was easy enough, we only had to use one lawnmower. Day 11 gives you a minuscule budget of 500 sun, but we're compensated with a lot of minecarts. These levels that really utilise the world gimmicks are my absolute favourite. Despite this one not being too hard, I found it really fun pushing the nut cards around. Upon beating this level, we're gifted with an additional 25 refund when digging up plants. This is actually really helpful when you're working with nothing but stall plants, but I'd much rather start with an additional 25 sun. I hope we get to unlock that soon. Day 12 is another one of the unbearable conveyor belt levels. Does anyone like these? This world must have the highest concentration of conveyor belt levels in the game. This blows. Day 13 is loaded with prospector zombies, but they're still not a problem. I can just slip my peanuts behind them and nut on their asses. This level also introduces the bull riding imps, which are weirdly the least threatening zombies yet. I'm not really sure why. But piano zombies strike down nuts with all the force of a frivolous drunk driver, but the raging balls just kind of chill there and give my nuts a gentle lick. They genuinely do like no damage. Day 14 was easy, but check out this mad chicken reaction. 
With gameplay like this, maybe those later worlds won't be so bad. While the rest of this otherwise unnoteworthy level plays out, I just want to talk over some channel updates. I'm now practically demonetized on my whole channel. In fact, I'm worse than demonetized because my ad revenue has been cut by 95% and YouTube is pocketing the rest. I can't even turn ads off on my own videos, so there's not much I can really do about it. And you know what pisses me off the most about all this? They won't even tell me what I've done wrong. I contacted support and they told me to figure it out myself while they siphon all the revenue off my video. YouTube presented me the opportunity to possibly work on my ultimate passion as a viable career, and they took it all away from me and fucked me. Now, the more cynical amongst you might liken this to Jeffrey Epstein promising spoils to the little girls he took on his island, but I couldn't possibly comment on anything like that. I know it sucked when YouTubers talk about money, and there is so much more to YouTube than making a profit. I love making these videos, and I love interacting with the community that I've built, and I want to do it more. But the fact of the matter is, I'm spending a minimum of 8 hours a day making these videos, so at some point down the line, I'm going to have to look at alternative ways of monetizing my videos. I'm not sure what it will be just yet. I just hope if you start seeing sponsorships or something similar on my videos, that you guys understand that it keeps my channel going and lets me create the content I want to make. Right, that's the rant over. And I guess I'll be swearing from now on, because what is YouTube going to do? Demonetize me? They've already fucking done that. Day 15 challenges us not to lose any more than two plants, which may pose the slightest challenge to a normal player who defends their lawn with feeble plant fibre, but my squad's nutty carapaces don't falter, which is to say, Goober Gang is hard as fuck. Upon beating this level with no casualties, we unlock Walnut Repair, which is a fun nod to the first game, but we probably won't come up much. It'd be a lot more useful if using plant food didn't fully restore nuts. On day 16, Penny chimes in with a nut pun of her own, and hints that Crazy Dave may be conspiring against the nuts. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. This level's really fun. It's pretty thematic making us protect a nut, which in itself is pretty easy, but there's this crazy difficulty spike here and the zombies come so fast and hard. Worst of all is that there's no minecart to the back, meaning prospector zombies can do catastrophic damage. My only saving grace is that the extra 25% refund upon digging up plants is actually really clutch here. I was ready to call this one impossible from the get-go, but somehow on my third attempt I just kind of won. I'm not really sure how, I kind of just got lucky. Day 17 is the hardest level of the whole challenge so far. I need to protect a row of sunflowers which I've only just noticed have little faces. This means that without access to lawnmowers I'm just kind of stalling with no payoff. I got pretty close on this one. What kind of helps is that the flower detection kind of sucks and sometimes zombies just pass it without the level ending but it doesn't happen frequently enough for me to be able to abuse it. Unfortunately, this level is impossible. Or at least that's what I thought until I was writing this script and remembered the coconut cannon exists. With one full minecart track, one coconut cannon could potentially clutch this one out. But how do I get to 400 sun in a level this tight? Well, let me introduce you to my two-step program. Step one, place a walnut in the frontmost minecart. Use this walnut to stall out as much as possible. Let the zombie nibble and gnaw as much as you can possibly handle, and once you're finally ready to blow, you plant that weapon down and bust coconut all over the zombies. I absolutely cannot believe this is happening to me again, but once more, the Plants vs Zombies 2 Nuts Only Challenge has been saved by edging. This is fucking poetic. Day 18, unlike the last level, is actually impossible. It's a plan your defense level with a minuscule budget. I really tried every combination of nuts I could think of on this one, but the absolute onslaught of chickens just overwhelmed my force. Once more, we're going to have to come back to this one with more nuts. After beating this stage by renting the most broken plant I've ever seen, no really, how the fuck is this fair? We finally unlock a new member of the nut crew. He's tall, he's huge, he's imposing, and he's way too expensive to ever justify using. It's unfortunate, but I just can't say I've been dying to spend an extra 75 sun on a walnut. He'll probably just linger around until I need to use him to block flying zombies. Maybe he can stop prospectors actually, that could be really useful. Of course not. Day 19 was another level that I labelled impossible due to the restriction of not being able to lose more than two plants. I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to beat this one, like over two hours, but I was able to retroactively beat it first try of my new edging strategy. I love this, since it adds a bit of much needed variety to the challenge, but it's such a shame that it only really works in the wild west because of the minecarts. Day 20 plays more like a PowerPoint presentation in the Plants vs Zombies game. I really hate these levels. Day 21 was agonizingly hard. I failed this one so many times, but when I lost this level, it really felt like it was my fault because I wasn't being quick enough with the placements or minecart usage, and that's a really good feeling. It doesn't feel like I'm getting cheated by the game, but it feels like I can improve and overcome this level. The first Prospector Zombie waltzed over the flower line with no issue, which lured me into a false sense of security since I thought that's just how it worked, but nope, that was a glitch. I was actually able to beat this one in just over an hour by slipping my nuts in behind the prospectors in a way that stops them from moving but still lets the peanuts shoot them. This was a good level, I feel like I actually had to think about shit for once. Day 22 doesn't let you nut, but day 23 does. This was yet another seemingly impossible level. 
I can't describe to you how unbelievably bleak the original end of this script was. I had like 5 failed levels in a row, but the coconut cannon is so much better than I thought. The 400 sun isn't that bad since I can just stall with walnuts until I've got enough for it. Again, it's such a shame I'm probably not going to be able to use the coconut cannon much outside this world. This level wasn't easy by any means with the coconut cannon though. The little chickens would somehow dodge the cannon fire sometimes, which was so annoying. This level being a surprise victory, we're left with just one day left. Day 24, the final level. Fittingly enough, we need to protect three endangered walnuts. This was one of the most macro intensive levels of the entire game. Moving these nuts around so they didn't get devoured was genuinely difficult for my meaty man fingers. I spent so long grinding this one out that it really hurts me to say it's not possible. Not yet at least. It could be done so easily if we had even a small minecart track in the back for a coconut cannon. But as it is, there's just too many zombies for the peanuts to mow down. These last fouled levels are extra annoying because they could actually be done pretty easily if we could prematurely launch our lawnmowers, but we don't actually unlock that ability to much later on. But for now, I need to write this level off. I still don't think there's been a single level that I can say is fully impossible yet. Though, that might change very soon. After one more no nut no zombie boss, we're done with the Wild West. Okay, I guess just this once I can do it for nothing. Ew, ew, ew. Okay, I guess I can do one more for nothing. Ew, ew, ew. Uh. I knew from the very start of this challenge that past the first three worlds, I'd have to experience an extreme difficulty spike. A spike so large that I truly didn't know if this challenge would even be possible from here on out. Frostbite Caves of Only Nuts would be the hardest challenge I have ever taken in my gaming career. Freezing winds rendering nuts infertile with no heat producing plants to counter it. This world would be over before I started, except I have a secret weapon. I have amassed a staggeringly large audience rooting for this game to be cleared with just nuts, and I realised that it's in PopCamp's best interest I beat this challenge, as it's a pretty good alibi against the pay to win allegations, and plus, I've probably influenced like 10 people to play this game, which at the rate this game pushes ads generously lines the gilded pockets of PopCap. So here's what I did. I emailed PopCap asking them to create a custom plant just for me, a direct counter to freezing, and a way to actually deal with the difficult zombies to come. This nut would be my silver bullet. At first, they responded pretty confused and also called me a slur. But after I threatened to start calling them poop cap in front of my large impressionable audience, they relented and sent me the download files to my one of a kind, exclusive to me, ultra premium walnut, the Explodo nut. Oh, and I also have the gum nut now, but I just pirated that one. Day one introduces us to the first and much less frustrating world gimmick of Frostbite Caves, the sliding tiles. I really like these. I've never actually played this world before, as I originally stopped playing around the time Dark Ages was the newest world, so this is all new to me. But I found the sliding tiles really made for some interesting level designs. I'm not really sure what the tiles were supposed to be thematically though. Maybe they're supposed to represent drifting glaciers or maybe I'm just really overthinking it. Either way, I really like them. Peanut Spam was able to carry this level but that may well be the last time I'm ever able to say that. Day 2 introduces the other and much more annoying gimmick, Freezing Winds. We start the level with some frozen nut friend which allows me to demonstrate the raw might of the Exploder nut, freeing frozen plants whilst obliterating any zombie in its path whilst costing the same as a regular walnut, whilst recharging in a fraction of the time. Yeah, this guy is busted beyond anything I've witnessed in this game so far, but it's cool to finally have a powerhouse on the team. Three days in and we're already at our first conveyor belt level. This world is absolutely infested with these boring ass levels, to the point where in a challenge like this it feels like you've got half a world to play. So I've come up with a compromise for you the viewer to make this a better watching experience. Whenever this playthrough is interrupted by an uninspired conveyor belt level, you will receive a nut fact presented by a celebrity guest. So don't tell me my production value isn't going up. So, take it away world renowned animator Pig Sheffer. Did you know that pistachios aren't the usual nut brown color, but instead carry a green pigment? And just like green vegetables, the color comes from its high amount of antioxidants? That's also why my skin is green. My body is made of antioxidants. You see in this pig? You're not the only green YouTuber that can animate. Day 4 introduces us to our first new zombie of the world, the Cougar Zombie, and I actually think this might be the hardest zombie to deal with in this entire world. He'll sit at the very back of the stage and lob snowballs freezing your frontmost plant, which is tough because the exploding that kind of needs to be the frontmost plant to unfreeze my other plants. Lucky for me, the cum that actually stops the Cougar from throwing at all, although this is kind of an expensive manoeuvre. This level was pretty easy though. Day 5 is already another conveyor belt level. Did you know walnuts contain a few compounds that promote and regulate sleep, including melatonin, serotonin, and magnesium? Which is handy for me because I am currently within your walls. Day 6 presents us with a rather bizarre puzzle. We start with a set group of plants, but like, what do these have in common? 
Like sure, I'm glad we get the tool not included, but why is he even here? It's like five jigsaw pieces from five different puzzles. Anyway, since I couldn't use all the nuts, I decided to leave the exploder nut behind since I wanted to see what I could do about him first, but uh, not much it seems. I mentioned in one of the earlier videos that the lack of sun isn't as bad as you think because you get a fair amount of time to set up while the first couple of zombies trickle in, but that's just not the case here. There's seven zombies, including one cougar in the first wave of zombies. It's getting ridiculous now. Combine the fast and hard pounding we get from zombies and the fact we lose half of our nuts at random, it makes it basically impossible to play these without the exploder nut. Again, the exploder nut's not foolproof. The cougar zombies can easily render them useless. Day 7 was absolutely full of the cougar zombies, which made this one extremely difficult. Basically every nut I put down would get frozen. I was still able to beat it at first try, as one exploder nut busting would free like three more setting off a chain reaction. I guess now is a good time to point out that I streamed all of this run on Twitch. And I'm really not sure why, but people in chat were going bonkers for the gum nut. I thought people would be more interested in the exploder nut, or maybe want to see more of the OG walnut, but no, all people cared about was getting to see the gum nut in action. But they were even more invested into what I was going to call it. Chad split into the hardcore gum nutters and the extremist cum nutters. There was a vicious war going on in chat until the religious nation of the scum nutters appeared and almost fully united the chat. That was weird. The game had spoiled us with two levels in a row where we got to play the game how I wanted to play, so naturally it's time for a conveyor belt though. What really bothers me about these levels, more than just disrupting the nut challenge, is they're so damn easy. Like, you don't need to think about the placement at all, just mindlessly place down the plants as given to you. To make up for such a pace breaker, I've managed to get a cameo from the actual Tom Hanks, the voice of Woody from Toy Story. Don't ask me how I was able to arrange this. Take it away, Tom. Did you know that during the development of the Explodo Nut, its name was originally slated to be Buster? Buster Nut? They changed this name out of fear that immature YouTubers would pick the low-hanging fruit. Day 9 marks the first appearance of the Dodo, a very disruptive zombie, but not in the same way past zombies have been. Previously, the tough zombies have all been some variation of instantly killing the nuts. But the dodo actually doesn't do that much damage. Instead, it works against the flow of the level. What I mean by this is, with sliding tiles, zombies get funneled into a few lanes, which is great when you're working with limited resources. But the dodos ignore the tiles, forcing you to commit resources elsewhere. On top of this, they can just fly over nuts, so I can't just drop an exploder nut on them and forget about it. They're such a hassle, and I love it. They're excellently designed zombies. Luckily for me, the gum nut is a perfect counter to them. One gum nut will hold several dodos in the same lane for most of the level, letting the mowers sweep them up. This was a really fun level. I'm excited to see if the other new zombies will mix things up this much as well. You're fucking joking. Well now that there's more conveyor belt levels than there are celebrities to cameo, I guess this level can serve as a little update. I'm monetized again, which is neat. I don't make a crazy amount of money off YouTube, but it's enough to fund some really cool side projects I have lined up. So expect some really cool non-PVZ stuff coming up. I'm really excited about it. I also hit 30,000 subscribers. When I uploaded the first part of this challenge, I had exactly 27 subscribers. I never thought that I could possibly hit such insane numbers. It's been the most exciting month of my life, and I'm going to keep the momentum going. Thank you all so much for the support. Day 11 showcases the disturbing stall power of the gum nut. This level funnels all the zombies downwards into the bottom lane, and because of this, the gum nut can stall the entire level on one spot, with each gum nut spawning essentially four or five tall nuts on the spot, for the cost of one. If it wasn't for the dodos, I'm pretty sure you could beat this level with a single peanut and a lot of gum nuts. This level also had four waves, which terrified me. Day 12 is a set and forget level, so naturally we're spamming the impossibly strong explodo nut, which is an easy solution to this one. Though annoyingly, just like Nigel Farage, Mao Zedong, and a certain German Chancellor I'm forgetting the name of, we're missing one nut. The strategy was kind of unfair, until it wasn't. So I decided to give the coconut cannons a try. They cleared a total of two zombies. I eventually landed on alternating rows of exploder nuts, so I could slot in new nuts to clear the others when they're frozen. The strategy proved to be pretty good, this was a really fun level. Day 13 could have easily been beaten by spamming exploder nuts, but I wanted to make sure other nuts were represented in this challenge. So I started off with good old peanut spam. It's just dawned on me that I forgot to mention the most perplexing zombie of the game yet, the blockhead zombies. These guys are just kind of buckethead plus. That's it. It wasn't until like the last 10 stages of the game I even realized they were different. They're kind of a waste of a unique zombie. This level introduces the dreaded gargantua, this time featuring three throwable imps. These guys will be tough to... Don't worry, for the sake of the video, I'll find some creative ways to deal with them. Day 14 doesn't let you pick your flowers, because of course it doesn't, but this one's really funny to me. 
Because the idea of this one is you don't have access to sunflowers and instead you need to unfreeze them and protect them in a sort of can you survive with limited resources situation. But I've beaten every level so far with no sunflowers, this one just feels ludicrously easy. Before my sanity is completely eroded by all these levels, let me just point out that I'm now completely sold out of small channel bragging rates, which are incredibly popular. But I'm now stocking medium sized channel bragging rates, so if you want to claim one of your own, subscribe. And thank you again for all the support. Day 15 was probably my favourite level of the entire challenge so far. This level tasks you to protect two pepper pots, meaning we actually have a source of heat for this level. So I decided to forego the exploding nut this time. This level was even fun for me to watch back, because you can see a clear evolution on how I decided to beat this one. I started off as I always do, by spamming peanuts in the back, but I got ruined by the winds very quickly. Then I learned to abuse the free heat provided by the pepper pots, but this left a huge blind spot in the middle of the map, so this became the gumnut lane where dodos faced an eternity of sticky abuse. I also tried coconut cannons at some point, but damn this damage has already fallen off so much. Once again this level shows the gross stalling power of the gumnut. You can catch like 10 zombies in one spot and they're not going anywhere. Is there any plant in the game that can rival this stalling power? It's plant food effects pretty bad though. The only weakness of the gum nut is once a trap zombie is slain the gum disappears and the gum nut's plant food makes it spread its filth across the map randomly so more often than not you're just going to hit a couple of brown coats. After attempting this level for about 2 hours Twitch chat was getting really bored so I decided to move on a bit earlier than I normally would but this level was definitely beatable without exploding nuts. I'll probably come back to it at some point, it was really fun. The game must have detected that I was having too much fun with that last one and gave me yet another conveyor belt level to bring down my blood pressure. I'm really hoping the next world calms down with these levels. I'm just trying to make an interesting series here. I'm also surely running out of nut stock footage by now. I knew this world was going to be difficult, but I didn't expect it to be a nightmare like this. Day 17 is the introduction of the troglobite zombie. They're a pretty unique zombie that I can deal with just fine by using the premium nut brothers. This level's really bizarre, because you start with frozen foom shrooms, which I'm guessing is some kind of counter to the troglobite. Except, even if I wasn't doing this challenge, I wouldn't have access to them yet. Plus they look really bizarre in the frozen wastelands, they just look out of place. I beat this one first time without exploding nuts, which means I've successfully dodged the carried by premium plants allegations. People who disregard you are just total peanuts. And I'm not talking Charlie Brown, I'm talking about the little nuts yeah, with the shells. The real peanut gallery. <laughs> that would be peanuts. Day 19 limits us to just three nuts, but I got this far in life with just two, so this shouldn't be too hard. It was pretty hard. I first decided to let Twitch chat decide which plants I was going to use, but then I learnt very quickly that they cannot be trusted. I then went back to using old reliable, but with the troglobites clogging up the entire stage with ice blocks, I kept letting zombies slip past. Once you actually start paying attention to what's happening though, it's not too hard. Day 20 was an actual migraine. I just couldn't keep up with the two side lanes getting clogged up with icicles. In theory, the play in these levels where the wind is extra brutal is to just dig up plants before they get frozen to get the sun refund, which would have helped a bit. But with no sun producing plants, doing this just results in you try to defend the whole map with like, two nuts. I'd rather just have the plants freeze and then be freed again by an exploder nut. After getting kind of stressed out on this level, I decided I needed a bit of clarity. I needed a bit of zen. So I took a break from the nut grind and decided to decorate my zen garden in the only way I know how. Now when I'm feeling a bit blue from all these hard levels, I can come to the nut garden for a bit of peace of mind. That peace of mind did not last long at all though as I accidentally boosted the walnut. I decided to limit test the walnut to see if I could solo day 15 with just a plant food boost. With just a small bit of help from the gum nut, the boosted walnut can absolutely beat day 15. If you don't forget how the dodos work three times in a row. Anyway, after finishing off day 20, we unlock endless mode, which I decided to have a bit of a go with with nuts only. I remember loving endless modes, especially in the first game, but man, this shit takes forever to get interesting. I gave up due to the risk of my Twitch chat falling asleep. Time to get back to the challenge. I'm gonna have a mental fucking breakdown. Day 22 introduces my actual worst enemy, the weasels. These weasels weren't my arch enemy because they were particularly tough or counted my nuts in any way. In fact, I'd argue that peanuts probably counted the weasels. No, these furry orifice fillers were the bane of my existence because I could not, for the life of me, remember that they existed. I think it's because unlike the chicken wranglers, there's a short delay before they're summoned and I'm 90% sure they were just randomly spawned for no reason. I was also having to balance this ultra intense gameplay with reading my Twitch chat which is harder than it sounded. On my first attempt I got absolutely trolled by a guacodile that triggered weasels off screen when I wasn't expecting it at all. And my next attempt after that was even worse in which I learnt the weasels spawn on death as well. Thanks to patented Twitch technology you can actually hear my reaction to discovering this detail. Not even close to being a challenge. This was so easy. I got good, yeah. I got good. 
the fuck? No! No! Oh. Oh. Guys, I gotta get started on that Discord. I think I may have just actually proven myself to be king of the fucking dimwits. After running it back once more, we beat this level without using the Exploder Nut, and the guest appearance of the Coconut Cannon. Day 23 is a pretty creative use of the Endangered Plant Challenge, when we need to protect a column of char guards, which in turn protect our own plants. It's a very difficult level that just throws heaps of zombies at you. What really makes this level obnoxiously hard is that it repeatedly drops zombies directly on top of the char guard, which is fine at first, and it sort of acts like a tutorial, but towards the end of the level it's pure carnage for the orange fellas. So how did I overcome this Herculean task? Well first of all I went to bed, and in a foul mood my head. But once I awoke from my slumber, it was game time. First thing first, we need to abuse the three double sunflowers we start with. The plan for these is to unfreeze them ASAP and collect as much sun as possible before they become rodent food, or I guess moose lid food? Then use that influx of sun to set up a row of peanuts to defend against the weasels and explode nuts to deal with absolutely anything else the game chucks at us. This time around, I beat the level first try, which really goes to show you the power of having an angry nap. Although I did piss and shit myself when a weasel phased through my nuts just to prank me. Day 24 marks three entire levels in a row where I get to play with the plants I want to, which in this world I'm very thankful for. Although now I need to produce 2500 sun, so I guess it's more like two and a half levels. This level was another one of those levels that was extremely difficult, but mostly because I kept getting distracted by reading the Twitch chat. I started this one by piling all the sunflowers in the top lane because of a YouTube short I watched about PVZ1 speedrunners doing this. But then I realised for the spirit of this challenge, it just makes more sense to beat the level normally and then stall out the end and produce all the sun then. This is surprisingly a tall order for someone as intellectually ungifted as myself. Day 25 is no surprise at all. I've already moved past the five stages of grief, which according to Google is anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance, denial, sadness, guilt, shock, complicated grief disorder, crew's bereavement support, confusion, anticipatory grief, acceptance and hope, denial and isolation, crying, insomnia, denial again, and finally, another round of acceptance. Thank you, Google. Day 26 has a really interesting setup. It gives us two sunshrooms, which I can't free from their icy prison until a dodo spawns, and it starts the zombies with three frozen weasels. I've been a bit negative in this video so far, but here's something I absolutely love about this world. This world has the best sound design of any world I've played so far. I love the sound of the dodos pecking on the nuts, and the weasels make a really satisfying popping sound when you kill them. And when you use a peanut plant food on them, it's like cracking all your fingers at once. Music in this world was very divisive, with some people in my chat absolutely despising it and some people loving it. Me personally, I think it's great. I think leading it with a kazoo was a risky choice that gives it such a unique sound. The only thing with the background music I wasn't too keen on is that it doesn't start until the first wave, which meant when I was streaming it left a bit of uncomfortable silence. Day 27 has such a fun setup. You've got to defend three rotobagas in a V formation whilst the entire board is filtered into the V. This leads to an incredibly fun use of the world gimmick. Nuts are natural protectors, but even so, I failed this one quite a few times. The tall nut got to make a vital appearance in this one, and the gargantuan showed me how unfair the gum nut really is. I see why people ban premium nuts in their runs, but you know, those people aren't beating the game with just nuts. I ended up even utilising the coconut cannon here, although I did forget to use it a lot, but man, that plant food came in absolutely clutch. This was one of the most fun levels we've had this whole journey, and I actually got to use every nut in a meaningful way. Day 28 is the first level in the entire game that uses actual psychological warfare against the player. It's a plan your defense stage, but the whole time you're setting up, the zombies are moaning loudly in your ear. I'm trying to organize my nuts here whilst Buddy over there stroking his shit. First, I wanted to try my old reliable strategy. I knew it wouldn't work, but I wanted to see how much the difficulty has really decreased. It was a disaster. The next setup I tried was an armada of coconut cannons. This attempt was extra sad, just showing off how little damage the coconut cannons really do. Next I tried one row of peanuts to deal with the chaff, and alternating rows of exploder nuts so I had some leftover sun for additional exploder nuts to free the frozen zombies, but I just kept failing the weasel reaction check. Then finally I came up with my ultimate defence, the explosive chessboard. With this setup I had so much sun leftover to free any frozen plants. It still took a couple of tries with this setup, because this level is just brutal, but we did clutch out with the alternating nuts. This level was just so much fun. Now it's time for day 29, the last challenge of this world. I really hope it's as fun as this one was. I just need to know, what was the thought process behind making the penultimate level of this game an agonizingly easy level in which you don't even get to pick your plants? 
I did try to beat it with just walnuts, but it went exactly how you expected it to. I didn't realise this was the final level of the challenge when I was actually playing it, and my reaction to figuring it out says it all. Wait, what the fuck? That was the penultimate one? That was the last one? You're joking! We didn't even get to use nuts! No! No, that's fucking miserable! You're fucking with me. That was the final level. That. You're... What? Oh, this video is going to be a disaster. This video is going to be such a disaster. This, this video is going to end my career. Oh my god. I, I'm getting cancelled on this one, dude. I've, there's like, there was like fucking five levels in here I could use my nuts, and I use Exploder Nut for all of them. I'm cancelled. I'm over. I knew I had to do something to make this video interesting, but there was no more nut fun left to have. So for this world only, we have a side quest. We're going to attempt to speedrun the Zomboss. There's no rules, we're just going to kill him as fast as humanly possible. My third attempt, we smash the world record. I challenge anyone who made it this far into the video to try and beat my time on this. And that was Frostbite Caves. This world really had the highest highs and the lowest lows. The levels I did get to play this ways were an absolute blast. It was super challenging and they were so creative, but the game feels the need to wrestle away control from the player at every turn it gets, and it just makes you play the glorified tutorials. I wouldn't even care as much if they weren't so offensively easy. I, uh, I, I don't really understand the references in this world, so I, I don't know how to be funny here. Now that I've got good, I need to go back and do all the levels that I said I'd come back to. Starting with day 22 of Pirate Seas, it turns out this one was actually possible the whole time with coconut cannons, but I wanted to use Exploder Nuts anyway because they're more satisfying. Day 24 of the Salty Express was significantly harder, but still sorted first try because of the overtuned nature of the Exploder Nut. Day 24 of Ram Ranch took a full hour to beat, but only because I refused to pause the video I was watching so I could focus on moving the nuts around. Day 18, however, I, I still can't beat. The exploding nuts just don't cut it here because the chickens have these really weird hitboxes that kind of clip into the nuts they're eating, meaning they can dodge the explosions from the exploder nuts. This means that day 18 is now the only level that stands undefeated. Yo, it's Shagrot from the future. I did beat this level eventually, but my god was this one difficult. If I was to estimate, I probably spent about 10 to 12 hours on this nightmare level, which is by far the most time I spent on any level in this game. I think part of the difficulty of this is that I played it on an emulator, which made moving the carts around kind of janky. And not being able to utilize the lore modes because of the mass chicken spam was just mean. There is one level in the game that's harder than this one, but it's weird that one of the hardest levels in the challenge is in Wild West. Anyway, now that we're finally caught up, it's time for the next chapter in my adventure, The Lost City. Day one, as always, is an introductory cakewalk, but I'm really not sure how to feel about the world's gimmick. The Lost City is littered with sun tiles, which basically act as a sunflower. On one hand, I actually get to experiment with my nut setups and actually get to use some bougie nuts for once, but at the same time, I like the adversity of the extreme environmental challenges. Maybe the zombies in this world will be extra tough to compensate. Day 2 introduces us to the Red Stinger. PopCap was really proud of the Red Stinger's design because they make you use this all throughout the world. And I get it, he is pretty cool. What's upsetting to me is that he does what the peanut tries to do but so much better. The Red Stinger is a repeater that can also become an emergency walnut in a pinch and is somehow 50 sun cheaper whilst the peanut is simultaneously a pea shooter and fucking awful, despite being a premium plant. But to be fair, the peanut being so bad is actually quite a large part of his charm. I wouldn't want him to change. <laughs> Day 4 introduces us to two new zombies, which does draw red flags for the pacing in this world, but to be fair, the Lost City actually probably has the best pacing of the entire game so far. They introduce a steady pace of zombies throughout the entire world, meaning that the end of the world still feels quite fresh. First we've got the parachute zombie. Thankfully, they're not like the bungee zombies from the first games. Those vile misanthropes were the absolute bane of my existence as my childhood. You gotta be crazy if you think 10 year old Shagrot was paying for that plant that literally did no damage. The parachute zombies might do something special, but I paid so little attention to them, I really don't know. The other zombie introduced here was the shovel zombie, and it feels really early to be dropping an enemy of this guy's caliber on us. But we are starting with six sunflowers for some reason, so I guess it makes sense. I can't put into words how nervous I was when the shovel zombie first showed up, because if the exploder that can't deal with him, then the challenge ends here. 
Lucky for me, dropping an exploder that on his head forces him to eat it, and the crisis is averted. He also can't dig up the gum there, so I have multiple ways to deal with him. So as long as I pay attention to them, they shouldn't be an issue, which historically has never been an issue for me ever. I just need to know, what is the design philosophy behind putting in conveyor belt levels practically every other level? It's not like it's easier or cheaper to design it this way, I just don't get it. Anyway, did you know that walnuts are gluten free? Making them definitively the most obnoxious nuts. Pompous little pricks. Day 6 really showed me how temperamental the shovel zombies are. Sometimes you drop a nut on their head and they're forced to eat it, and other times they just don't care and hit you with the wombo combo. Something new I noticed, which I hope is just isolated to this world, is that when a new plant is introduced, it's not enough to just make you suffer through a forced conveyor belt tutorial. Popcap also felt the need to just slip it into your roster like an unwanted deworming pill that you put in a rolled up bit of ham for a dog. Day 7 was entirely unnoteworthy. Did you know that if you place a picture of a pecan next to a picture of human lungs, you can see that life was truly created by design, and you must be a joyless husk if you can see these two images next to each other and not believe that there's a god. Day 8 isn't a conveyor belt level, but I still don't get to play the game. That's all I can bring myself to comment on. I'm just happy it's not a- <coughs> Day 10 is our Endurian tutorial. This fan favourite nut combines the classic setup of Warner and Spike Rock into one complete package. This guy ranks the top of the list of plants that I would like to carry this challenge, and also ranks the bottom of the list of plants I'd insert into my body. I'm very excited to use this guy whenever we unlock him. In the meantime, after beating day 10, we unlock the Mercadamia nut. I don't know if I'll ever get to use this guy, but it officially means I can have a full lineup of nuts. This is the biggest achievement of the challenge so far. Even though I thought shovel zombies were going to be the bane of this run, day 11 proved that they're not really the threat. But these mosquitoes however, they are the bane of this world. I saw these guys for the first time and assumed that they were just reskinned seagull zombies, but no, these are seagull zombies that were given every stimulant drug ever fathomed and then reskinned. They zip across the map at a speed that's probably manageable for the average gamer to be fair, but for my level of mental processing, I barely had the time to react. And even then, once I've pulled together all remaining functioning brain cells I have after writing all these nut jokes for this long, they just fly over my nuts. They're the perfect counter to my army, except I have a counter of my own. I didn't think this would ever come up, but with the boosted economy of this world, the Tauna is finally a vital part of my strategy. Haters be damned, this guy really can block flies. Day 12 is the return of the sun production level, except this time I don't even need a sunflower, because I can just play normally and then stall at the end to make up the difference with the sunflower tiles. Except I don't even need to do that, because there's so many damn sun tiles in this one, it just happened naturally. This one was exceptionally easy. Day 13 was the first conveyor belt level that I didn't even react to. No wincing, no moaning, not even a frown. I just expect them now whenever I start enjoying myself. I feel so indifferent to it in fact that I can't even manifest a nut fact for this one, so I'm just going to let ChatGBT plagiarize me a nut fact. Did you know cashews are the ultimate party crashers? They're like, hey, fruit, mind if we hang out? Then they chill on the outside, totally ignoring the nut family only sign, just doing their legume thing. Odd man, another level where you don't get to pick your plants? Day 15 wants me to protect these little orange things whose names I can't even commit to memory. How am I supposed to care and protect for these endangered plants when they make them out of line for literally no reason? Little asymmetrical pricks. Whoever it was who told me that Lost City had way less conveyor belt levels than Frostbite Caves is permanently banned from my channel. This sucks. Day 17 introduces us to the tent pitchers. They carry around these little wardrobes from that one movie that spawn an infinite army of zombies until they're blown up. They're pretty cool to be honest, I actually really like them. I'm surprised this isn't the gimmick of one of the worlds. I'm not sure why, but they remind me of Portal Combat from the 360 version of the first game. That was easily the worst game mode that game had. This is it. This is the conveyor singularity. We've hit a critical mass of conveyor belt levels where there's now more conveyor belt level gameplay than there is epic nut moments, so I guess from now on I'm doing conveyor belt facts. Did you know that the first mention of conveyor belts in recorded human history was in 1795? It was described as quote, an endless strap of thin pliant leather that goes through two pulleys. This is what you guys subscribed to me for, right? During day 19, I had an epiphany. The sun tiles are kind of lame. Having access to so much sun kind of takes away one of my favourite aspects of the challenge. I liked that I had to try and make the most out of my limited resources, I generally find that really fun. I'm not going to try and avoid the sun tiles going forward, because that would be too pedantic. Instead, I'm going to stop using the exploder nut for the time being, and try and carry the hardest levels this world has to offer with the original crew, and the gum nut. I think Twitch chat would have skinned me alive if I left out the gum nut. Day 19 was actually pretty smooth about the exploder nut, except for the host of mosquitoes that made it not smooth in the slightest. This level took several tries, cements the no exploder nut idea, as this was so much more fun than all the levels so far. Day 20 looks like it's straight from the thumbnail of a Plants vs Zombies content farm channel. 
This level was insanely hard due to the monstrous amount of zombies that spawned, but actually it wasn't hard at all because we have 13 sunflowers to use for free. In this one there was a shovel zombie that managed to dig up 5 plants in 3 seconds, which that was not my proudest moment. Day 21 is a demo for a premium plant. Is this the first time I've done this? Like I think the toadstool is a really cool plant, but getting a level dedicated to a plant you need to spend real money on is really lame. When I was making the first part of this challenge, when I was sitting at 27 subscribers total, I watched every single Plants vs Zombies 2 challenge video there was on YouTube to get a feel for the pacing and narratives, but I mostly like half watched them on one monitor while playing the game. So when I heard there's a level out there that could be beaten only using sun shrooms, I was so excited to make it all that way so I can gloat about soloing a level with just a walnut. It felt like it was forever away. But now after tens of hours of gameplay, hundreds of hours of video editing, and tens of thousands of subscribers later, I finally made it to that sacred level. And you don't even get to pick your fucking plants. This stinks. I almost failed this level by the way because I kept missing the tiles. I just want to clarify that even though I sound really negative in this video, I'm still having a lot of fun playing the game. Most of my frustrations from the game come from the content creation side of things. There's ultimately nothing wrong with not being able to choose your plants, and even the conveyor belt levels have their place. Day 23 was the strongest showing from the cum nut yet. Without the exploder nut, we just don't have the DPS to deal with such a vain bulging brute, but the gum nut scum is so strong it can hold down a gargantua permanently. Unless you miss the gum nut on a target that can barely move. Up until now, I wasn't aware of how much damage the parasol zombies can do. Even with a pair of powerful peanuts shooting her, she almost soloed a tauna. This level was tough, but with some heavy lifting of the gum nut, and some even heavier lifting from the lawnmowers, we did this one second try. Day 24 was the most tense final stand I've ever experienced in a video game. On one side, you have a fortress of nuts laying down their life to defend this beautiful row of delicate flowers. On the other side, a single one-armed shovel zombie having his finest hour. The standoff felt like it lasted a century. I tried placing a peanut between him and his shovel, I tried bringing out the explosives team, I even tried letting the Mercadamia nut do anything. I hate that name by the way, but as suspected, he did not do anything. The shovel zombie single-handedly brought down my empire. It took like 10 more attempts just to get back to the final wave by the way. This level was insanely hard, but with some perseverance and a very patient twitch chat, another level was taken down without the exploder nut. This level was definitely the hardest level of the world so far. Day 25 gives you a selection of pre-selected plants, but it does let you pick two plants to use. This is the kind of level I want to see more often. I still get to play the game I want to, but under a restriction of limited plant slots. I love these levels. Luckily the coconut cannon is one of the pre-selected plants, so we have some extra firepower. The gum nut's an obvious choice. The peanut's so versatile, clearing off chaff while still stalling, and it's easily the best plant to put on the gold tiles. But without the tall nut, I'm completely open to the mosquitoes. The plot twist here is I spent more time deciding on what plant to do than I did playing the actual level, because this one's really short. It's only two waves long, and the waves themselves aren't that big. My holy cannon setup was enough to sweep the entire level. Even though shovels completely blocked the coconut cannon fire, you can catch them with the splash damage and the plant food will just go through them. This level was odd. I had heard that once you unlock the tobacco leaf, the game dries up on the gold tiles, but man, they weren't kidding. We're down to a single gold tile in this one, forcing us to return to the classic peanut spam, just like the old days. I'm not sure how I was able to clear this one first try. It came down to a single lawnmower and the clutch coconut cannon plant food. Also, for future reference, if you ever see a conspicuous looking gum nut chilling at the back of the level, it means I was using it to store with its plant food. It never works out, but I never stopped trying. I was warned from the start of this world that the turquoise skull zombies would be the hardest zombie that I have to deal with in the entire challenge so far. First of all, it's kind of cool to be introduced to a zombie so late in the game. There's only a couple levels left, so it makes them seem really elusive and almost like a final boss. Secondly, this is just a random observation that I had, but unlike every other zombie that's holding something in front of them, the turquoise skull doesn't actually protect the zombie, so you'll just be lobbing peas at the skull and a random arm will go flying off. Lastly, his turbo death laser wasn't too scary. It doesn't instantly kill whatever it hits, so the Tornut can actually survive one of his blasts. And I was spamming those anyway to deal with the mosquitoes. They're still tough though when they come piling in at the back of a big wave. I had to bring out the Exploder Nut for this one, who completely counters these guys, effectively turning their lasers against them. Overall, I like the Skull guys, but I feel like it's a movie reference that I'm missing. Day 28 is another one of those tile levels, so it doesn't let us nut. Since I'd never actually played this world before and I was watching those challenge videos, I honestly thought someone had edited the rolling ball in as a joke because they looked so out of place. At the time, I thought Day 29 was the final nuttable level, but there's actually 32 levels in this one. We're given a V formation to work with. The sun tiles being so far up and weirdly placed was not a challenge. The real challenge was the entire air force of mosquitoes we had to deal with. I wasn't exaggerating earlier when I said the mosquitoes were the real boogeyman of this world, they're by far the biggest obstacle. I knew very quickly that the exploder nut was going to have to come out, but even then they can't deal with the mosquitoes. My only hope for this level was to set up a row of tornuts ASAP. 
but even with the boosted income of the gold tiles, they have a long recharge time. Luckily, the cheap and quick buster nut supplements the setup, and after way too many attempts, the bugs are squished. This one's the new highest level of this world. Day 30 was the most hectic layout yet. We got so much sun from this one, I didn't even know what to do. I was just spamming random nuts in random spots, and it kind of worked out. Out of curiosity, do you guys even use the sunflower for this world? I feel like the sun economy for this world is so out of whack that it puts difficulty all over the place. This one was far easier than most of the levels that came before it. Day 31, the final level of this challenge, is a gimmick level with no nuts. It's sad but expected at this point. This one was pretty fun though. I have a real soft spot for the magnifying grass, and this was probably the most the world actually utilises its world gimmick, using the sun tiles to fund the magnifying grass. It's a shame that we've been denied our last nut like a misbehaving gimp, but at least this one was a cool level. After having to actually fight the Zomboss for once because I spent all my power at money speed running the last Zomboss, the world comes to an end. We're now 5 worlds deep into the game and you can really feel the difficulty ramp up with each one. Except this one. This world was perhaps the easiest one so far. It's a shame that the sun tiles were just too much of an advantage for us, but the hard levels of this world were still very hard. My sleep paralysis demon is now just a mosquito that buzzes around my room. Time went new and got old like history. Stuff from the past went into a mystery. An old man died. But look, a computer. Everything's cool. It's the future. When I think back to my golden years of gaming as a wee lad, I think Halo Reach, Pokemon White, and the Far Future Baby. This world was the shit. When I was playing through PvZ2 for the first time, the Far Future was the last world in the game. And as such, it was hard as balls. I know that sounds crazy now with all your insanely overpowered premium plants, but back when I was just Timmy Free Peter, the mechs in this world felt insurmountable. And in fact, I don't think I ever finished this world back in the day. It was too difficult for me. Day 1 shows us exactly why this is the best world. The power tiles are hands down the best world gimmick. Now I know I said in Lost City that I prefer the world gimmicks that make the worlds harder, and I even complained that the Lost City was too easy because of the sun tiles, but this is a big exception. The sun tiles are powerful in a really boring way, just letting you put more dudes down. And realistically, in life, how many situations have you found yourself in where you thought, man, if only there were more dudes here right now? But power tiles let you make either fun and unique combos of plant food, or just let you rip and tear with satisfying spam. Sure, now it makes levels easier, but that's only because power tiles are the third biggest victim of power creep just after these fellas. Day 2 and we already have our first nuisance of the world. I really don't know why, but I just could not think of what to call the zombies that produce a shield. I just, it totally escaped my mind. I genuinely had to Google what they're called. The shield zombies. The shields these things make aren't too strong, but they're just strong enough to basically invalidate peanuts. And they don't skimp out on these guys either. Later on, they show up like a lot and they stack their shields. They're going to be a problem. Day 3 immediately introduces us to two new threats. Firstly, the best imps in the entire game. They're not actually that much of a threat, but God, they're so cool. And then we have the flying zombies. These guys are hands down the harder zombies to deal with in this world. I'm sure a lot of players didn't even notice how crazy these guys are, because they're balanced around the blover, since you're expected to be carrying that thing on you all the time. And the game will just send out like 12 of these guys at once, and the only thing we have to deal with it is the Tauna. It's the same issue as the Lost City with the mosquitoes, but even then we have the economy to actually spam Tornuts. Now that's just not an option. They skip right over the cum nut, who's my usual counter to anything difficult in this run. And again, I'm not using the exploder nut until I absolutely have to. But even then they just fly over the exploder nut as well, so he's not even the solution here. That means all I can do is rely on the power tiles, which works for now, but it definitely gets me worried for later. Day 4 is a gimmick level, but check this out. Even though we have a new mechanic that Popcat is very proud of, we still get to pick our own plants instead of being spoon fed the easiest possible solution out of fears of players maybe being overwhelmed with slightly different gameplay. I don't know. I was never too fond of the exploding sun levels, but they don't push them on you too much. And since we still get to use our own strategy, I just feel like a nice change of pace. I'm telling you guys, far futures on top. Day 5 introduces the cone mech. It doesn't really do much, but it is very bulky, and it's a nice homage to the Conehead Zombie. And just like its design's sake, it's a nice intermediary mechanized threat, which is just perfect coherency between gameplay and visual design. Day 6 is the first level that we don't get to pick our plants, but after what I've gone through in the last two worlds, this is fair. In some worlds, I would have had to done two or three nutless levels by now, and at the very least, I get to use the laser beam. Man, if someone's out there right now working on a beans only run of the game, I bet reaching Far Future must be an insane jump in power unlocking this guy. If no one ends up doing beans only, that might be something I try. Day 7 is a nice reminder that if you're worried that the power tiles will make this too easy for me, you don't have much to be worried about. This was my first failed level. I got too tangled up dealing with the hulking mass of the cones to deal with the flying piss ants, but after a few more tries we got past it just fine. Day 8 is our first conveyor belt level, my absolute least favourite type of level in the game, but you know what? When they come up this little, they really aren't that bad. 
In fact, they are a nice little breather. Plus, we get to put down the power tiles, which is pretty neat. This is also the first appearance of the Mecha Gargan. This guy was the absolute bane of my existence when I was playing through this as a kid. Taking the ultimate zombie life form and giving it a laser was mind boggling to me. Actually, now I think of it, are there any other Gargans with special abilities like this? Let me know in the comments if you can think of any. Day 9 is another one of those funny challenges that doesn't let you use any more than 15 plants, but I'd be lucky to get that many in the first place. This level chucks a ridiculous amount of mechs at you, but then gives you the counter to them after you've struggled through the level, which is actually pretty neat level design. I fucking love the EM Peach, by the way. This little stony fella carried me so hard back in the day. I'm sad I can't use it now. I think Day 10 might actually be the biggest difficulty spike in the entire game so far. Not that this level's the hardest I've dealt with, but that the introduction of the Disco Bus makes levels magnitudes harder from now on. These mechs pull up, drop the high-functioning Ecstasy Addict Squad, eat 100 peas like they're not even shit, and then suckle on my nuts like the Hoover from the Teletubbies. These guys have to be one of the most stacked zombies in the game. Day 11 is a plan your defense stage, and man, it feels like we haven't had one of these in ages. It's a tradition at this point to start these levels off with peanut spam, just to see if it's still viable this late into the game. And surprisingly enough, peanuts alone swept this level, with a little help from power tiles and lawn mowers. As I was playing through this one though, it really did not look like it was going to work. Day 12 is unreasonably difficult. I love the EM Peach and the Blover, but man, these levels really force your hand into using them. The mechs are far too tanky and spammy for me to keep up with. The Mecha Gargan is also a real pain. He's the first zombie I've dealt with so far that can wreck havoc while taking a load off the gum nut. Luckily, the Gargant lasers don't actually one-shot any nuts, but having a couple of them on screen will start to tear through your nuts like a gold medal pain Olympic athlete. I ran it back many times on this one, but it was obvious from the start that this level was going to require the Explodo nut. Naturally, Buster Nut is enough to deal with the tough zombies, but he still can't deal with the flying nerds. Day 13 is perhaps the most important level of the entire game so far. This level introduces the all-star mech to the roster. A seemingly innocuous zombie at first, how could it be any worse than the boogie bus? Its shoveling ability is strong, sure, but we've seen it before and dealt with it just fine. Well, what makes this zombie so unique is that it's the first zombie I've encountered that completely counters the Explodo nut. There's no way for me to drop this nut on its head and force it to eat it. No matter what, the all-star mech will shove the Explodo nut away without ever triggering it. But you know, this is actually good news to me. I was actually starting to worry that the Explodo Nut would have no counters. The All-Star mechs single-handedly bring back so much difficulty to this game. Now I can just scum them in place and put an Explodo Nut next to them and hope something triggers it, but that's a huge commitment and straight up not an option if there's multiple on the screen at the same time. Man, I know I keep singing the praises of the far future, but I really love this world. Day 13 is also special for another reason. After beating it, we unlock possibly the most hyped nut in the entire game, the Infinite. I can't even begin to explain my love for this plant. My mind was blown learning about this infinite value nut for the first time. This guy is absolutely joining the sack. That's a group of nuts by the way. And it appears you guys really agree. I've honestly never seen a poll that skewed. I am just a bit concerned that either the infinite will completely invalidate the warner or vice versa, and the repeat value of the infinite just isn't as important as the upfront stalling power of the acoustic warner. Day 14 was one of the swarmiest levels I've played yet. We must be farming poppies or digging for oil back in this garden because we're barely set up and we're getting hit with air raids and drone strikes. I'm sure this one's pretty easy if you're using the blover, but without it I'm left scrambling for tornets. I actually somehow got to the very end of this level and basically beat it first try, until I noticed at the very end there was a spending limit and I had just wasted my very last spendable sun. After running it back a few more tries, I decided to put the infinite on the frontmost power tile, just for a bit of stalling power, but I made a game changing discovery. I had no idea this thing blocked flying zombies. The infinite just didn't look that vertically gifted to me. With this interaction in mind, I now understand why Twitch chat was groaning so much when I was explaining that I needed to give up all my lawnmowers just so I could buy some time to set up. Man, I was so worried that the walnut was going to get completely power crept by the infinite. But actually, it looks like the tornut's the one that's been outdone. This tangibly challenged chap is five tornuts in one. That is some serious girth. Day 15 was a protection level, which are normally pretty easy for us, and with some very advantageous power tiles, this one was pretty easy. That said, it still did take me an unreasonable amount of attempts because of my senile reaction speed, but the infinite carried so hard. Day 16 is the second conveyor belt level, but since again there's so few of these and the last couple of levels were so hard, I genuinely, unironically, wholeheartedly enjoyed this level. I got to use the Bonk Choy, which is my girlfriend's favourite plant, and you get to pull off some cool power tile wombo combos. I wish I knew how to be a little more subtle with my unparalleled love for this world, but I can't. The far future is just better. 
Day 17 is another nutless gimmick level, but again, I just don't care because the magnifying grass is just so damn cool. This has to be one of the most underrated plants in the game. Funneling sun through a crystal to mimic burning ants with a magnifying grass is such a genuinely inspired design. This is another plant I'd love to see someone try and solo the game with. Day 18 to sun production level, and I can't believe how long it took me to think about this. I only just recently realised I could just beat the level normally without sunflowers and just stall at the end, which has much more of the nut spirit, you know. At first, I got too distracted spinning yarns to my Twitch chat, which has become my new favourite hobby by the way, and forgot to even bring a sunflower. Second attempt, I beat the level in a pretty unconventional manner. Day 19 showed me probably the greatest benefit of running an all nut army that I didn't even know about. I can misclick on the exploding suns with my clumsy, greasy goblin fingers like 10 times, and my carapace coated companions will still be unfazed. Just look at how insane this stalling power is. This has to be like 30 or 40 walnuts worth of HP right here in a single cum nut load. Unreal. Day 20 is another protection level, which brings back another PVZ legend, the Starfruit. This fella has to be a contender for the absolute flimsiest plant in the game. I had to restart this one so many times because the starfruit would perish to like two bites. This was unfortunately another level I just had to bring out the red guy. I'm surprised I've only had to use him a couple times so far. After beating this level, I finally unlocked the premature lawnmower launcher. In every video, I get flamed for not using this ability, but that ends now. As long as I remember, I actually have access to this ability now. I made day 21 so much harder than it actually needed to be. It's a sun production level with a maximum amount of plants you can use. I didn't realise that the plant cap is only on plants on the field and not throughout the whole level, meaning that this extremely difficult level that took me like 7 tries did not need to be this hard at all. And because of this, I didn't stall out the sun production like last time because I didn't even realise it was an option. This one was quite embarrassing on stream. Day 22 is a plan your defence stage, and as always, we start off with a bunch of peanuts, but this time, featuring an insurmountable, see I do know words that aren't impregnable, layered defence of infinite walls to deal with the flying pricks. A virtually unbeatable strategy that was instantly beaten by one all-star mech that shattered all four walls with one shot. Next I decided to spam exploder nuts, which ordinarily wouldn't work, but for some reason every single all-star mech funnels into a single lane, so I can just send one premature mower down that lane. In this one, I looked away to read Twitch chat for like one second, and when I looked back, the level was over. I really don't know what I did to win this level, it was really difficult, but the second try, it just kind of happened. Day 23 gives us two restrictions that will never matter in the slightest. I don't know where to slot this little tidbit in organically, so I'm just going to drop it here. I don't know if I was just going crazy, but I swear to god I kept hearing the Simpsons theme in the background music of this world. Will it go and play some far future levels and only pay half attention to the music and see what I mean? It just goes Simpson mode for like 2 seconds. Day 24, the final nuttable level of the world. It's a sun bomb level, and this one was a joy. There was an entire army of mechs to face, and there's just something so cathartic about blowing up that many mechs with sun bombs while your nuts hold the line. A simple level, but a great end to a great world. After beating the most fun Zomboss because of wombo combo nonsense, we draw close to another world. I guess it's pretty obvious that this has been my favourite world to play in the challenge. It's just the perfect mix of fun mechanics, cool enemies, and the kind of difficulty that makes you plan out every level, but doesn't require you to spend like 4 hours on a single level. There's still a few worlds I haven't played yet, so I can't say it's the best. But at the end of the challenge, I'll rank all the worlds, and I'll be shocked if this isn't at least top 3. The Dark Ages. From the very start of this challenge, this was the world that I feared the most. For a challenge run with no sun producing plants, this world will surely be impossible. A lot of you in my comments said that the Dark Ages would be the end of this challenge, and some of you even had the balls to suggest that I would need to cheat and use a sunflower. Just the thought of that sickens me to my core. I'm not changing the rules up just to make things easy. I will be beating the Dark Ages with just 75 sun and a dream. Now obviously we're going to need to get a bit sweaty for this one. Just like a millennial who spent the last two decades with a mobile phone pressed firmly against his scrotum in his skinny jeans, you'll be seeing a lot of bright red nuts. But just trust it's vital to the process. But that's enough stalling. It's time to take on my bigger challenge yet. Day 1 is normally where the game will demonstrate its world gimmick, but the gimmick this time around is just you're deprived of sun, and the tombs from Egypt are back, but this time they give you a little allowance. This little feature is the sole reason why this world is theoretically possible without a sun producer. As long as the first zombie spawns on or adjacent to a sun grave, I can use all of my spendable sun on an exploder nut to clear the graves and get more sun. 
Each grave gives me enough to buy two more exploding nuts. This is great and all, but I still have to use my extremely limited resources to actually kill the zombies. I spent about half an hour on the first level of this world. But in retrospect, looking back over the gameplay, I had it like the first time round if I had just used any of my plant food and cracked open this last sun team. This was only the first level of the world and I was already sweating bricks over just cone heads. It's not looking very good. Day 2 was pretty easy. The sun tombs respawn so I actually have a constant source of sun. I'm not really sure if they keep respawning or if they're finite, but looking up information like that isn't really my style. This level's probably a mycophile's wet dream since it introduced two of the raddest mushrooms in the game. The sun shroom, which for my money is the second coolest sun producing plant in the game, but you'd need to be a real schmuck to use one of those. And the puff shroom. Little Puffy got nerfed in the transition between Plants vs Zombies 1 and 2, but in return got one of the most fun plant food effects in the game. Also, is it just me, or does this guy seem much more fitting of the name Puff Shroom? I don't know, it's just more puffy to me. I always confuse the two. Huh. Well, I guess there it is. Well, over 100 levels, 7 videos, and 23,000 words in, we have arrived at our first truly impossible level. No Sun Tombs means we have but one Exploder Nut to clear the entirety of Day 3. He's pretty busted but he's not quite content farm thumbnail strong. This looks pretty bleak. But you know, we have been here before. When we faced the otherwise impossible freezing winds of the Frostbite Caves, my nuts did not buckle or yield when faced with the cruelty of this world. We adapted, we overcame. We leveraged our YouTube success to bully a small indie company into making us a custom OP nut. So once more, I wrote an email to the Dons themselves. Dearest PopCap, I hope this letter reaches you in due time. I see you're in urgent need of some good publicity after the launch of the mulch you call sequel to our beloved Plant vs Zombies, and I am in need of any way whatsoever to keep my nut challenge going. Make me a nut that can shine light upon the melancholy of this dark age without making it too easy for me. Yours truly, Big Nut Small P. They responded almost instantly, agreeing to make me a second and final custom nut, on the condition that I fund the art myself as they fired their entire digital art team during the mass games industry layoffs. I simply replied with a gif and reminded them that they are in no position to parlay with me after this. They reluctantly sent me the download file to my brand new plant, the Sun Nut. This bad boy generates just enough sun to emulate the natural sun production of past worlds and I'll only be using one of them to make sure I keep things challenging. And if it dies, I'll be starting the level over. And of course, I'll only be using it for this world. Anyway, with our new ally, we cleared day 3 with no problem. Day 4 is a conveyor belt level, which would be annoying if it didn't introduce one of the best to ever do it. I fucking love the Hypno Shroom. In the last video, I forgot to give you guys nut facts on the conveyor belt levels, which was because I was just having too much fun with the far future, and didn't mind the gimmick levels at all, so I didn't feel the need for nut facts, but now I'm back to being a deeply hateful person. Did you know that during the Dark Ages, it was believed that everyone had three nuts inside of them? One is evil, it is anger, sin and prejudice. The second is good, it is purity, faith and kindness. The last nut is the one I put inside of you when you subscribe to my YouTube channel. So. Do with that information as you will. Day 5 introduces us to the first unique zombie in the world, which is kind of odd since we're now a full quarter of the way through the game, but I suppose it's better than being frontloaded with all the new zombies and being left with nothing new for the entire world. The Jesters are a notoriously tricky zombie that returns projectiles, rendering like 70% of the plants in the game useless. Lucky for us, this guy doesn't phase nuts at all, so we don't need to worry about him. In fact, I remember hearing somewhere that the peanut was designed as a counter to the Jester. Hell no! Hell no! Man, the peanut is just so perfectly bad at everything it does. This day was pretty easy overall though. Day 6 is a plan your defense, and as per tradition, I start with peanuts, but I can't just spam them this time around because of the jesters, so the logical next step is to spend 800 sun on two coconut cannons. Normally, this would be kinda ass, but in this situation, they're actually completely worthless, as the jesters send back the coconut blast kung fu panda style. I still beat this one first try because I had some leftover pocket money to spend on exploding nuts. Day 7 introduces the second unique zombie, the Night Zombie. This guy's a buckethead zombie that maybe the Foom Shroom can penetrate? That's the only thing that I can tell might be difference between the two. Probably some different stats, but you really can't tell from just playing. This day was extremely standard, just like gimmickless zombies walking down the lanes. What the good old days. Day 8 doesn't let us pick our plants. Did you know that pistachio ice cream is really yummy? Day 9's a really cool gimmick level. These random elixirs spawn that makes the zombies either faster or stronger and they can stack multiple times. It's a really cool idea and honestly it's one of my favourite gimmick levels, but the exploder that just kind of stomps this level. It's really unfortunate. Did you know that screenwriter Vince Gilligan of Breaking Bad fame has a masterful ability to imbue every minor detail of a scene with a deeper meaning that reveals a lot about his characters that otherwise is never verbally spoken by characters on screen? This got me thinking. 
What was the importance of the scene where Mike Ehrmantraut sits at his window all night eating pistachios? Maybe the tough and brittle outer shell that protects the soft, delicious inner nut represents Mike himself. Or maybe it's a statement about pistachios being an old person food. But I personally think that old people might struggle to open pistachio shells, especially the ones that are basically sealed and you need to really use your teeth to open them. What a talented director. Day 11 is the grand arrival of what I predict will have been the hardest zombie in the entire challenge to deal with, the wizard zombie. This robed bellend counters the nut brigade so hard it's not even funny. As you've probably noticed, the exploding nut is carrying this world pretty hard at the moment. But the wizard outright disables them, meaning not only do they not kill zombies, the zombies that they were stalling just waltz right through them. That's tough on its own, but what really makes these guys the scourge of this world is that they don't eat an exploding nut if you drop it on their head, which means you need to put them next to the wizard and hope that another zombie detonates it and kills the wizard. Except you can't do that either because the wizard just polymorphs the nut. The only way that I can stop a wizard is with an infinite barrier or a gum nut. The gum nut's ideal as long as there's only one wizard on screen, but it doesn't help late game when there's multiple. The barrier works much better in general, but it doesn't kill them, so I need to place an exploder nut behind them, except you can't do that either because the infinite barrier dies way faster than the exploder nut, so my only real option to kill a wizard is with peanuts. But this is double fact, because not only does this only work for a single lane, most of the time they don't even kill the wizard because some other prick is blocking them, so more often than not I'm forced to use a plant food. So in total, I need 225 sun and 2 plant food to kill a single wizard. And the final wave has five of them. It's so fucked. The wizards are so difficult to beat that it changes how you play the game. You're no longer playing to win. You're playing the level over and over and over again to learn the exact techniques and the exact layouts of each waves and where you need to pre-place plants and where you need to hold your plant foods. This level is the only level that I think tops day three of Egypt. These are my favorite types of level because the feeling after beating them is unmatched. Let me run you through the final solution of this level after running it back for two straight hours. First of all, the sun that needs to be placed in this exact tile so it draws the least aggro from the wizards. As soon as the sun that is transmogrified in this level, it's over. Then we place two exploder nuts to clear all of the sun tiles. If we pre-place a bum nut right in this spot, we can gum the wizard down before it zaps anything, and we can just use a peanut plant food to clear it. The next issue is two wizards that spawn together. We can give up a lawnmower to clear one, and only after the first wizard has dropped, we can use a gummy pea shooter combo to clear the other. After cleaning up the chap of exploding nuts, we have two more wizards to deal with. This time we use our only plant food on a sun nut to get just enough sun for two gum nuts and two pea shooters. For the last wave, I'll be totally honest, I don't know what I did to beat it. This exploding nut normally goes off just before the final wave, but this time round it went off at the perfect time. I just don't know what I did to make that happen. I then blunder everything I could possibly mess up, but get carried by lawnmowers and a final gum nut. This level was exhausting. If I wasn't streaming it, I probably would have written it off as impossible. This was 100% the hardest level of the game so far. Day 12 was almost as hard as the last one. We need to protect 5 little fellas that are actively working against us. I spent an hour in this level before calling it quits and going to bed for the day. I promised everyone that this would be the first world that I streamed in one sitting, but I can't believe I waited for the perfect world for it to take like 12 hours for it to clear. After a nice little combat kip, I managed to beat the level in just 20 minutes. Mostly out of pure luck. Funnily enough, the wizards were actually really helpful in this one. I mean, they kicked my teeth in for most of it, but the first time I was able to get to the final wave, I had the genius idea to just not do anything and let the wizard zap all the puff shrooms and then walk themselves to death. I'm pretty proud of this probably fairly obvious strategy. Money gang. We love casting spells. Day 13 to conveyor belt level, but wait, this one is the peanut tutorial, meaning we have infinite peanuts to clear with. This could be the first nutable conveyor belt level. This has to be a joke, right? They must have made the peanut useless on purpose. Why is he unusable in his own level? God, the peanut's so bad and I just love him so much for it. Day 14 must have been the most frustrating thing imaginable to watch live. I just could not wrap my head around the sunbeam. In this level you need to generate 5,000 suns, but your only means of doing so are the sun graves and the sunbeams. This level went on for about 40 minutes and it was just Twitch chat explaining to me how the sunbeam works and then me either putting it on the flimsiest zombie possible or just forgetting to use it outright. I know this one must have drove my Twitch trap viewers to mental collapse, but I swear I'm entertaining. Please go follow me on Twitch, I love streaming. Day 15 was another plan your defense stage. Chat requested I do the checker pattern exploder nut strategy, but I messed up the pattern and it was murder on the eyes. These exploder nuts do virtually nothing as they all got sheeped. Then just as I thought it was over, I decided to waste all of my plant food on a single gum nut. And uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it. I thought this was a pretty funny way to win. Day 16 is the chivalrous arrival of the king himself. 
These zombies are irrelevant to us as they explode and that wipes out knights like shites, but I think they're actually really cool. I can definitely see them being trouble for normal playthroughs though. This level was another slog. Getting over all the wizards just takes so many retries that the difficulty is definitely losing its charm now. Just as I was starting to get frustrated, I discovered a little tech that changes the rest of this run. I can finally deal with the pesky wizards by predicting where the kings will be, so they land on the exploded nuts, killing them instantly. This means that the last waves containing 5 wizards are no longer just a lawnmower check. It does take a lot for my goldfish memory to remember where the kings are coming in for though, so it's not foolproof. I was warned by chat that day 17 was a noob trap. I assume they mean that people get tricked into placing their plants too greedily to get all the tombstones, but chat's nuts must not have the same destructive loads as mine because I cleared the tombstones very quickly. It's kind of sad, but a zombie that has all the boosts and has been knighted still gets one shot by the exploder nut. I think this is a really charming gimmick though. Day 18 doesn't let us pick our plants, but it does give us the peanut, but once again he is rendered useless by the jester. The jester has not been the challenge for me at all, they just make my peanuts feel sad. Day 19 is the last nutable level because this world's crazy short. And this level is a fantastic finale because we really had to pull out all the stops. We have to protect some magnet shrooms, which, side note, it's always disturbed me that the mushroom underneath the magnet doesn't have a face. It gives me I have no mouth and I must scream vibes. This level took every trick I had. Edging zombies with walnuts, remembering that I have the premature lawnmower launcher, pre-placing gum nuts and using kings to blow up exploder nuts. In fact, while I was attempting to do this level, someone in chat drew out an amazing diagram of all the techniques. This is really cool. After the quickest one and a half hours of my life, we slay a dragon and question why we didn't get this awesome imp earlier, and we bring the world to a close. This was yet another fantastic world. I need more time to reflect, but I think I might have actually enjoyed this one more than the far future. The real MVP of this world was Twitch chat for keeping me sane throughout all the crazy difficult levels. Marijuana. Stimulating. Mind expanding. Safer to use than alcohol. Neil Mixtape Tour. I've never played this world but I was very excited to give this world a try. Coming off the back of trying to beat Dark Ages in one sitting, I decided to set myself the same challenge for this world, and wouldn't you believe it, I did even worse. Going into day one blind, I was excited to see what the world gimmick was going to be, and upon beating day one, I was still eager to know what's going on, because day one doesn't reveal a thing. I had it spoiled by chat that the gimmick has something to do with the music changing, but the music just doesn't change anything here. I of course quickly learned that the music changes which zombies can use their special abilities, but this level is bound by tradition so it only uses basic zombies, rendering it pretty pointless. It's just an excuse to sample the background music. I don't care if this gets me cancelled, but I need to tell the truth. I need to tell my truth. The soulful kazoo solos of Frostbite Caves trumps every bit of Neon Mixtape Tour music combined, except the seed selection music that slaps. Day 2 is the real intro to the world, giving us a demonstration of both the beat and the punk zombie. The punk zombie is the most blatant power creeping zombie design I've seen yet. Remember when the all-star mech was the toughest zombie in the game because they could be forced to eat the exploder nut and it shoved nuts backwards rendering entire rows of defense useless? Well the spunk does all of that and it's sprinkled into levels like they're just regular brown coats. This zombie single handedly made this world unbearably hard. Get ready to hear me moan about it a lot. The beat's a pretty cool looking guy though, but I've never been too fond of the positional based damage plants. I find them too finicky. They freeze a conveyor belt level that shows off this world's signature premium plant, the cactus from Plant vs Zombies 1. I can't put my finger on exactly why, but I despise this. Anyway, let me use the time afforded to me by this conveyor belt level to shout out the sponsor of this video. Me! It turns out it's really fucking hard to convince a company to sponsor you making nut jokes. So I've made a Patreon. I've had a staggering amount of people ask me to make one so they can support me, and whilst that is heartwarming to see, the truth is that I've been too split between making videos and finishing uni, but now I have just single digit weeks left until I'm completely finished with university and I'll be taking the incredibly exciting and anxiety inducing leap of faith into content creation, meaning that I'll be making a lot more videos. You'll get the classic benefits like getting videos early, ad free and uncensored if that ever needs to happen, as well as getting a name in the credits. Once again, thanks to everyone who supported me in all capacities, the last couple of months have been the best of my entire life. Content creation has been my dream for as long as I can remember, and it's not lost on me how fortunate I am to be able to pursue it. Thank you all so much. Back to the video. Day 4 is nothing special. It makes us take a spike weed, which is really weird, but I guess it's trying to suggest counters to the punks. This world rolls out its unique zombies incredibly slow, which I prefer because it keeps the world feeling fresh throughout, but it does lead to some dud levels like this early on. It did take me a couple of attempts however, because the final wave sends out like 12 punks, but saving all my plant food to spam gum nut at the end works. Day 5 is a protection level. No new plants or zombies, just the same punk spam as the last level. This one took me 2 hours to beat. 
Unlike past difficult levels, there's no specific difficult part of this level. There's no one wave that's just too much, it's just non-stop punk spam. They're spammed so frequently, the world loses all of its charm, which actually almost mirrors the real-life over-commercialization of punk that killed the subculture. Did I say this was a protection level, by the way? Because it felt more like these little dipshits were holding me hostage in this level. I just don't get the point of a plant with a one-by-one -one attack radius that can't take more than two bites from a zombie. Even though this level took two hours to beat, I barely have anything to comment on. It should not have taken this long to beat, to be fair. I was playing really sloppy, and I kept getting distracted by Twitch chat. Day 6 is a very welcome break. This is the introduction of the roller skater. And this babe can instant kill anything she touches, which is honestly a godsend for this challenge. Unfortunately, the exploding nut won't kill her orbiters, but it's still enough to kill the punks. This level also makes you spam foom shrooms, which at this point has to be Popcap's favourite plant. They make you use it in like every single world. I'm bored of nut facts now, so we're doing whatever facts feel relevant to the world. Did you know that an average of 15 people die from roller skating related injuries every single year? And in recent years, roller skating has overtaken skateboarding and injuries. Day 7 really highlighted to me that I'm just a natural born quitter. I've never been so ready to give up on a level before. Even on the hardest levels I've played so far, you can just tell it's beatable. It just takes an unfathomable amount of trial and error, but this one would just looked blatantly impossible. The roll of the ballers were helpful, but not enough to quell the calamity of the punks this level throws at you but one particularly gifted Twitch viewer begged me to use the infinite barrier on this level. It's something that I've tried in past levels of this world, but the barrier lasts mere seconds against the insane amount of zombies this world throws at you. But this time around, those couple of seconds were just enough for the stars to align and let me clear the whole map with some incredibly unlucky exploder nuts. I somehow beat this nightmare level on my second attempt. Godspeed, brave Twitch viewer. Every world has one level that is disproportionately harder than the rest of the world and it's never where you expect it to be. For this world, it's day eight. No new zombies or special gimmicks, no need to protect endangered plants or produce X sun. It's the same as every other level so far, except the spam is just blatantly unfair. The punk zombie utterly counters every nut except for the gum nut, who's far too expensive to spam, meaning the only option to deal with them is to have other zombies pop exploder nuts, but if the punk music's activated, then there just isn't an option. Their straight up isn't a way to deal with them. You do have a small element of control over what music's playing by stalling out zombies to avoid death quotas, but this is very limited. If it was just a few punk zombies sprinkled in the levels, it would be fine, but look at this monstrosity of a final wave. I count 13 punks. This level was so hard for Twitch chat to watch, they started begging me to use the magnet shroom, stating a previous video where I said that I can use any plant with nut in the name. I chose not to use the magnet as it goes against the spirit of the challenge, but this is the type of scheming and trickery I love to see in my community. I'm so proud of you guys. After hours of attempt, I got the miracle run, where everything fell into place. I squeezed by without having to use a single plant food or lawnmower, and on the last nightmarish third of this level, I spammed the gum nut plant food and successfully stored them out. This was an incredibly draining level, and at this point we're a clean 5 hours into the load, we're not even a third of the way there. I was so fed up until one person dropped the wisest comment I've ever received. Someone lifted my spirits by suggesting that the world would get much easier as more zombies were introduced, as the punk zombies will spend less time in their own song and I'll have more ways to pop the exploding nuts. This comment single-handedly uplifted me to full spirits like a downtrodden mother of three winning 20 quid on a scratch card. Day 9 is a very welcome break from the extreme difficulty of this challenge. Even though this one doesn't let you pick your plants, it was extremely fun. You start with 10 sunflowers and they're at the very front of the level, and you need to meet a sun production quota, while the punk zombies push back the flowers, which actually helps you. This level turns a testicle twistingly annoying zombie ability into a fun and helpful gimmick. This level was also really hard, which is a first for these kinds of level. Very fun, 8 out of 10. Back to back man, that sucks. Whilst I normally put conveyor belt levels right next to declaring my taxable income on my list of favourite activities, this level is an exception. Not because it was particularly fun, but because it's the debut of the saviour of our run, an asset that frees us from the unshakable tyranny of the punk zombies. This level introduces us to the Time Warp, a plant that can reset the entire field back to the start of the level. This plant is very fun to use, but he's not our saviour because he's not a nut and obviously we can't use him. No, the actual carrier of this world is the MC Zombie. This guy can kill plants in a 3 by 3 area, which is exactly what we needed. From what I can tell, he's not bound by the background music either, which is perfect. Day 11 is yet another gimmick level, which is just fantastic but I'm not going to grumble at an excuse to use my beloved free peer. It's so ingrained in me to avoid sunflowers that I didn't even realise there were an option here. We're probably overdue a nut fact by now, but we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for these interesting nut facts, so forgive me if this sounds a bit improvised. Did you know there's an alarmingly high overlap between the PVZ Warnock community and the Femboy community? 
Every video I upload and every live stream I stream, I see a shocking amount of femboy accounts. I wonder what the link could be between femboys, a group known for gay porn and prostate milking, and nuts could be. It's day 12 and we're finally back to playing with our own nuts. This level was disturbingly easy. This game has a weird habit of sneaking really easy levels into the back ends of worlds. Just as that one Twitch viewer prophesized, the introduction of more zombies that can instant kill has made this world so much easier. We even managed to sneak a coconut cannon into this one. Since I've not got much else to say here, I want to apologise if I sound less energetic in this video. I just found out that the cast Kevin Hart as Roland in the Borderlands movie. This announcement was like the modern day the planes have hit a second tower for autistic 20 year olds like myself. Day 13 is a plan your defence stage, and you know what we do by now. The obscene power creep in this game is never more apparent than when you try to use peanuts in the later worlds. This game has progressed so far past the peanut that it feels like a completely different game. Next we try the old exploding that checkerboard, but the punks just make this strategy irrelevant. In fact, they kind of render everything we do useless. I knew this would be a tricky one and I wanted to see what the waves would look like, so I ran it back with the same layout, except this time I used two coconut cannons for shits and giggles. And for some reason, beyond mortal understanding, it just worked. It's like every time I shit on the coconut cannon for being overpriced and underpowered, it just carries a level out of nowhere. Day 14 doesn't let us pick up plants, but mysteriously brings back the sun nut, which is pretty neat. It's also here that I noticed something incredible that I cannot believe I didn't notice until now. When the zombies walk, they throw it back so hard. I will never be able to unsee the cheeked up zombies plap plap plapping towards us like that. Day 15 is a protection mission and I'm really bored of the beat. It's a nice pun and the foliage headphones are a nice touch, but do we need to use this prick every other level? In this level I misclicked and accidentally put down a torna. I think that's the only time I use them in this entire world. Day 16 is another conveyor belt level and the introduction to our newest Gargan. Now I was warned a shitload about this bloke in my comments, but you guys weren't kidding. Insta killing plants and laying away must be torture for sane players, but to me this is just another way to bust nuts. Did you know that if the coffee bean was in Plants vs Zombies 2, I would 100% be using him in this challenge? He's a bean, not a nut of course, but he has more swagger than all of the beans put together. Day 17 introduces us to what has to be my definitive least favourite zombie in the game. He's not overly difficult or even annoying, he's just astonishingly forgettable. I don't know what to call him, there's already a dickhead that spins and a virgin that kicks. The breakdancer can kick zombies forwards like a few inches. Not enough inches to please a woman, but enough to be annoying sometimes. He can get zombies past exploded enough, but half the time they still get caught in the explosion anyway. And on top of this, he just looks pretty stupid. This is less 80s breakdancer and more 60 year old man at the gym who gets a bit too handy with the teenage girls. Let me know in the comments what your least favourite zombie is, but I guarantee you, you do not dislike him more than I dislike this prick. To juxtapose the introduction of the lamest zombie in the game, Day 18 unlocks us one of the all time greats, the garlic. I pray you guys never experienced the same harassment I received when I said I wasn't going to use this legend. Trust me, it pains me more than anyone to have to leave the garlic at home, despite being walnut adjacent in gameplay. It just doesn't have that nutty feel. I do love the fella though, he's just so, I don't know, British looking. You can find like three guys with this exact face hovering around the Tesco's meal deal section. This level's pretty easy though, although I did completely botch this one by using the last plant food on a lane that had a lawnmower instead of using the one that was literally about to lose. Another day, another conveyor belt. I really want to hate how much the game is throwing these at me, but I can't lie, they've all kind of been fun so far, and this one's no exception. I adore the blueberry, like easily top 5 plants in the game. When it comes to character design, I'm a fucking sucker for small ass dudes with cheeky smiles. I love this spunky little fella, but he has to be one of the most frustrating plants in the game to use. Insta kill anything in the game, but it's totally random. Oh, it's so cool though. If anyone was really wanting to do a challenge of their own, blueberry only would be such a cool video. Actually, while I'm talking about challenges, I've been tagged in a bunch of Plant vs Zombies challenges recently and it's just amazing to see. But what I think the best part of seeing all these challenges pop up is, is that uh, the future of Plant vs Zombies has kind of been looking bleak. I mean, just look at this shit. So it's just cool to see a community come together like this. Some of my personal favourites made by smaller creators are Beans Only, which I feature in, Magnifying Grass Only, Fruits Only, Mushrooms Only, and not a challenge video, but major shout out to the guy that brought Plant vs Zombies into Minecraft. It's just cool to see a community make its own fun while EA is attempting to get us all hooked on the gaming equivalent of fentanyl. I'll have links in the comments to all the videos I mentioned, make sure you check them out. Day 20 is pretty easy now that we've hit a critical mass of zombies that can pop exploder nuts. That said, I did need to zone out and ignore Twitch chat to assure I didn't butcher the level myself. I really am my own greatest enemy in this. Day 21 doesn't have the spinny microphone zombie, meaning this level's much harder than the last. It's one of those levels where you can't let zombies trample the flowers. I feel like we've not had one of these gimmicks in ages, it used to be a staple. This is the one level where the breakdancing losers are actually a pain to deal with. They can just kick zombies straight onto the flower line. 
There's a really weird element of randomness with the dancers. Where it's almost a 50-50 whether he's going to actually eat a nut or kick three little freaks over it. The only way I could tackle this level was to just run it back over and over and over again because of the randomness. We were at it for about two hours until I scraped by a win. I've spent more time here than any other world so far and we still have 11 levels to go. I almost fell into the temptation of starting this level by saying Day 22 Electric Boogaloo, but then I realised that's such lousy writing and as a society, we need to come up with at least one other funny thing to denote sequels with. What does Electric Boogaloo even mean? It grinds my gears every time I hear it. This world is turning my brain into fucking goo. This level features yet another way to flatten our nuts CBT style in the nerd zombie. I'm not too fond of this zombie, truth be told. I really don't like how it's just a reskin of the troglobite. I mean, I get reusing content, I've pulled off the same thumbnail like 8 times now, but it just doesn't fit the zombie that well. The pixel zombies are pretty neat though. I must have shit myself, because day 23 was a total wipe. One thing I really like is that this world doesn't just use all of its zombies all the time. This level doesn't have the roller skater zombie. It's a small touch that does add quite a lot of variety. This level is stupid easy though now that we have like 5 ways to pop the exploder nuts. Day 24, plan your defense. The peanuts go down, the exploded nuts get kicked around, and the mighty coconut cannon erects my spirit tool once more to clear this level third try. Thank you, coconut cannon. Day 25 is a single piss easy wave. Like five levels into this world, we had like four waves to deal with. I just don't know why the difficulty has just dropped out of nowhere. The world feels so out of order. Day 26 is similar to the cool level with 10 sunflowers, except it's a bit more boring. I do really like the spore stream though. Creating more of itself by spreading spores is a really cool idea. I suspect if I played this world when I was a youngling, I would have really liked the spore stream. This one took quite a few attempts, but we did it around the one hour mark. Day 27, something something conveyor belt. This is the tutorial for the carrot. Now correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I've got a feeling this plant is beyond useless. It's a single revive that barely ever works. Maybe you can get some value of it if you use it with something like the coconut cannon, but it's just too faffy. Day 28 starts with an offense from a brand new zombie, the boombox zombie. This short shorts clad enemy can disable all plants on the map with its enchanting tunes, completely stopping them from attacking. Now this might be a bit of a controversial take, but if you're running plants that need to attack to win, that's on you. The Gooba gang is completely unfazed by this. For the most part. Also 28 has to be the latest we've ever seen a new zombie. The world is practically over now. This level is pretty easy. Scott Pilgrim over here was the last nail in the coffin for the difficulty in this world. But this particular level came down to quite a tight finish, where I needed to pass a reaction test and place an exploding nut down at the perfect time. I normally choke in these situations, but this time around it was the zombie that choked. He just dropped dead out of nowhere, it really caught me off guard. Day 29 is only two waves long, and it's stupid easy to stall out with cum nuts. I don't have anything else to add. When every zombie instant kills, it just means we're playing with cherry bombs that cost three times less and have a fraction of the cooldown. Day 30, and I'm just flabbergasted by how front loaded the difficulty of this world was. It started off seemingly impossible. I didn't know if I was even going to be able to beat this, and these last levels took minutes each, first try. Day 31 and the final potentially nuttable level of the world, and it doesn't let us choose our plants, but it does give us the sunshroom and the blueberry. I got a really cool nut fact to end this one on. Did you know that in my horrible nut tearless video that I'm very embarrassed of, I dropped the line, How good of an Egyptian deity can you be if you're not in Smite? Well, this prophecy foretelling actually came true, and they have recently added her to Smite. However, the god's name is pronounced Newt. How is it possible that the ancient Egyptians could build monolithic structures that modern architects can only dream of but couldn't pronounce their own god's name? After beating the hottest Zomboss yet, we finish another world. This world was by far the most brutal taking about 10 hours to complete fully. I'm absolutely dreading the dinosaur world, I've heard that it's even more difficult than this one. <laughs>just three worlds remain. We're in the last stretch of the game now. The last couple of worlds have been Herculean tasks, but we beat every single level they had to offer. In fact, we've cleared every level of the game so far. All 214 of them. The Jurassic Marsh is the world that's eluded me the most. I've never played it, it just sticks out so much compared to all the other worlds, so I'm excited to jump into it. But just before that, I wanted to say I've recently found myself literally daydreaming about getting my hands on that legendary silver play button that's so tantalizingly close I can almost taste it. It's one of those things that I never even saw as a goal, it was just so unfathomable that I would ever even be able to obtain it, but now I'm so close. So please make me the happiest little fella alive and subscribe. And also congratulations on hitting this sick milestone. Anyway, that's enough plugging. For now. Let's fuck these dinosaurs. Day 1 pulls from the Neon Mixtape Tour playbook and decides to show us nothing about the world. At least that's what I thought, but it turns out basic zombies walking forwards is pretty much this world's whole shtick, which presents a rather unique challenge. 
how do I make this interesting to watch? I really wish the first level would show us the dinosaurs. I just really don't have much to say here. At least this relaxed experience gives us a chance to sample the music. Where's the music? I could not for the life of me get the music to work in this world. I tried everything. I restarted the game, I turned the music on and off again, I even googled it. Those are the three ways to fix things and none of them worked. This is the roughest start to a world yet, but I'm a naturally optimistic guy my mother tells me, so I'm sure it will get better. Day 2 is the real start to this world, it's the introduction to the dinosaurs. The biggest question I have going into this world is, are the dinosaurs the world gimmick or a replacement for unique zombies? And seeing as you can't actually interact with them at all, I guess that makes them the world gimmick. I kind of wish they blocked projectiles or something, they just kind of exist. I want to rank the dinosaurs throughout this video, and the Velociraptor is an easy, inoffensive mid-tier to base the other dinosaurs around. But he loses major points, because I can't tell if he's purple or blue, which bugs me an unreasonable amount. In fact, that's my low effort engagement booster for the video. Comment below if you think he's blue or purple. Stupid 2015 dress looking ass. Day 15 is a very hasty conveyor belt level, which introduces us to the berries, whose name I do not want to look up. Is there a downside to using this berry over the cherry bomb? It seems crazy to me. This level makes you spam garlic and melon pods, which is such an eclectic cast of characters. Day 4 is exactly the same as Day 2, but a bit harder. I mentioned it before, but this is normally a symptom of pacing out new zombies in a world. It does lead to some real duds like this one though. I completely forgot we unlocked this bloke here. The last nut in the collection. The predecessor. The progenitor. The pre-nut. The primal walnut. I knew it was just a strictly better walnut, but I didn't know that it was this much stronger. Look how it recharges even quicker than the exploder nut as we seamlessly transition into day 5. This level introduces the imp, though introduce might be a strong word as we've seen them like a hundred times by now. But they don't drop from the sky or get risen from the dead, they just walk in a straight line. I'm kind of noticing a pattern here. Day 6 introduced a new dinosaur. Kind of weird that we get our second dinosaur before our first new zombie. And no, I'm not including Buckethead Plus over here. I really hate it when the game does this, why can't he just throw a bone or something? At least then I could call him the boner zombie. Anyway, the Stegosaurus has a really goofy face and I dig him for that, but he does almost the exact same thing as the Velociraptor. I'm going to put it a tier above the Raptor though for having more swag. Day 7 is a conveyor belt level and a flower line level. Popcat must have been feeling extra daring when they made this one. I didn't notice this till I watched back over the footage, but this is the first time the flower line has been in the middle of a row and not in between two rows, meaning that we can just sit primal walnuts on top of the row and never lose, except when I did lose, but that was a mechanical error, that doesn't count. Day 8 is exactly the same as the last few. The zombies walk forwards and occasionally got kicked around. I really see what they were going for here. Basic ass zombies that utilize dinosaurs for cool boosts, but in practice, it makes every level feel the same. It's really, really hard to find things to say about these levels. They need to introduce some new shit ASAP. I caved into curiosity in this level, and I used the love mushroom when the level was basically over. I know I said I wanted to be able to interact with the dinosaurs, but making them horny was not what I had in mind. This is probably my favorite plant in the whole game. Day 9 is a sun that's special and the introduction to the stones pterodactyl. I can see this dino being a real pain in the ass for people, but dropping a zombie behind an exploded nut doesn't really change anything. It just makes the peanut look even less desirable. The pterodactyl is an easy S on the tier list though, I love his stupid stoner face. Day 10 is where I really noticed how insane the primal walnut is. I can drop one down next to an exploded nut to guarantee another lane gets caught in the explosion. And they come off cooldown together, so I can keep doing it as long as I've got the sun. As for the level itself, I have nothing to comment on at all. Every level is the exact same because there's no variety in the zombies. Sure, the dinosaurs displace them and all, but they're still basic zombies that walk forward and bite. I've really written myself into a corner here. The logical thing to do would be to skip over the boring levels and just talk about the fun ones. But I'm nine worlds deep now, and at the end of all this, I want to put all these videos together into one big glorious movie sized nut videos, and I want to have beaten every single level in this game on screen only using nuts. So I'm subjecting myself to writing the equivalent of those water droplet torture machines. In day 11, I tried a new angle to mix things up. See, normally I would just stop using the exploder nut to mix things up, and while that would definitely make the world much harder, it just wouldn't make the world any more interesting, since it's all just basic zombies. And I'm pretty sure the dopey ass pterodactyl makes it impossible anyway. So I brought in a very special guest, the Endurian. Mr. Irish Tickler isn't a nut, but he's definitely nut adjacent. And in a vote I did ages ago, most people agreed he's allowed in this run. And whilst I still don't consider him an official member of the crew, his inclusion should at least make the world a bit more interesting. Holy fuck, this guy's garbage. They feel way too squishy and they feel like they do no damage either. 
They work really well with the Primal Walnut since he can tank damage while the Endurian deals damage, but that works like half the time. Also, just a reminder, but just because I think a plant sucks doesn't mean I don't like them. In fact, they're normally the ones I like most. Day 12 is the first legitimately difficult level in this world, and by legitimate I mean not because of self-imposed rules. We have a limit of how many plants can die, and for the first and possibly only time in this entire challenge, I can shout out Walnut Repair for coming in clutch. Being able to heal Walnuts was actually pretty big here. Also, for any Endurian haters, you can heal it with Walnut Repair, which speaks volumes for its inclusion here. We're also introduced to our newest Gargan in this level, and his gimmick is that he takes three exploded nuts to kill. That's not really a big deal normally, but here that's half of my total plants allowed to die, and there's two of them things. Despite being the hardest level so far, it only took like 20 minutes. In day 13, the game really ramps up how many dinosaurs they throw at you. It does sort of force you to play most of the game in the first two rows, but that's just not an issue for me at all. But I do recognise that that's a luxury afforded to me by the boner breakingly strong power of the Exploder Nut, and many players might struggle without that kind of power. I know I'm reiterating points I've already made here, but I gotta stress, I love the idea of only using basic zombies and empowering them with dinosaurs. It's such a cool idea, and it reminds me of the alchemy levels from the Dark Ages. But man, it just makes every level feel the exact same. Maybe if the dinosaurs did something more creative, that might make things feel better, maybe more destructive power. But as it is right now, I just... I'm not enjoying this at all. Day 14 doesn't let us pick our plants, but it does answer a burning question I've had since I jumped back into watching PvZ2 content. Why does absolutely everyone use the Primal Peashooter? There's so many OP pay to win Peashooters in this game, but this is the one I always see getting used in videos. But no, I get it, this thing's absolutely insane. It is wild to me that the best answer to Gargant in the game is a Peashooter that you unlock in level 1 of this world. Anyway. Let me use the spare time afforded to me by this waste of space gimmick level to plug my... Patreon. By supporting me on Patreon, you get access to sweet features like getting your name immortalised in my super swanky end screen and early videos. And thank you to everyone that supported me in all capacities. I'm actually so excited for what comes after the nut challenge. I have so many videos planned, I cannot wait to share them with you guys. Day 15 makes you protect two primal walnuts. Whenever I use plant food on them, I hear the Reggie Rock noise in my head. Here's a really weird thought I had while I was editing this level. Whatever happened to fat zombies? The pterodactyls are functionally the miners from Plants vs Zombies 1. And that's what got me thinking about it. In the first game you had the miner and also that basketball lobber zombie. And I guess you had the yeti. But in this game you have like 5 times the content of the original game and zero fat zombies. I guess that's what a plant based diet does to you over the years. When I was checking to see if there are any fat zombies in the game I googled PvZ fat zombies and my lord that was a mistake. Day 16 is a conveyor belt level. I flipped the coin on this one to see if I'd plug my Twitch here or give a fun nut fact, but it landed on its side, so I'm going to give you a sad dinosaur fact instead. Did you know that in the classic kids movie, A Land Before Time, the voice of Ducky, the little dinosaur that goes yup yup yup, was brutally murdered by her father when she was only 10 years old. She had her signature yup 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 phrase engraved on her tombstone, and Universal Picture would go on to replace her voice actor. When I learned about this when I was much younger, I bawled my eyes out since that movie was so special to my childhood. Life is so unfair. Day 17 is a total nothing burger, but now that I've spoke about my second favourite kids movie, this guy is straight up spike, like one to one. New dinosaur alert everyone, day 18 we get the T-Rex. This guy is just kind of a reaction check, which if you've seen me play live, you know I fail a lot. Once we're already set up, it's not a big deal. Speeding up a column of zombies is tough, but it doesn't really feel like something a T-Rex would do. I feel like it should be more disruptive or damaging. But his goofy Labrador face and wagging tail does bring the visual language around. I'm putting him just below the stoner pterodactyl, I like him a lot. Day 19 was a conveyor belt level, and it was so easy that I drew a penis, complete with testicle fuzz made out of spike rocks. Did you know that in 2020, an international team of paleontologists discovered giant sperm cells in a 100 million year old female ostracod that was preserved in amber? This is the oldest known sperm cells. That was a dinosaur fact and a nut fact in one. Day 20 is a sun production level, so we busted out all reliable. We've seen the sun that far more than I was expecting since the Dark Ages. This level was remarkably easy. What the fuck? A new zombie? Why is there a new zombie and why is it this late into the world? I said it before that I like worlds that pace out their unique zombies, but this is too far. I was so fucking excited to see what this guy does. Why is the first and only unique zombie in this game just a brown coat but with a bit more health? I swear to god, this game is winding me up. Day 22 is a plan your defense, and as always, we start off with peanut spam just to see how far our buddy's fallen. And what the fuck, we almost beat this level first try. This is the first time since maybe Pirate Seas that the peanut can almost solo one of these levels. 
We beat this level second try with only peanuts and a single gum nut to use plant food on. This should speak volumes about the state of this world. Day 23 is the primal potato mine level. I'm not sure if I've said this in a video yet, but my original idea for this challenge was to do potatoes only. And the main reason I switched to nuts was because I despised the buff to the levitator. Having a 1% chance to instant kill is fucking awesome, but 50% is just lame. If I did do potatoes only, this level would have been a tremendous milestone. Day 24, lots of zombies and dinosaurs and stuff. The dinosaurs kind of pushed the zombies around. It was a riot, very memorable. Day 25 is the introduction to the last dinosaur in this world, the Ankylosaurus. This bloke is very special to me because these were my favorite dinosaurs growing up. I remember seeing one fuck up a T-Rex in Walking with Dinosaurs and I thought they were so metal. Nowadays, I'm not really sure what my favorite dinosaur is. I've seen this picture of a dinosaur before, but I refuse to believe it's real. But if this majestic creature did ever roam this earth, then he is without a doubt my favorite dinosaur. Anyway, the Ankylosaurus is really unique because he actually shoves the zombies forwards, which is the variety this world was really lacking. To be fair, he does shove much harder, even knocking plants away, but it's a little too late at this point to really matter. He's going just in front of the T-Rex, finishing off our tier list, but that's 90% because of childhood bias. Day 26 is a mold level, which we've not seen in ages. The issue of the dinosaurs is that you can kind of count on them all by just sticking to the first two rows, so the mold colonies do kind of make it harder here. And in a sense, that's kind of cool, because this was always the most nothing challenge in the game. Day 27, plan your defense. I started as always by spamming peanuts, and I think the best way to sum up this entire world is to just show you my live reaction to the final and only wave of this level. Wait, that's the final wave! I've not even used plant food yet! That was just all peanuts, no plant food! What's happening? This is day 27! Day 27, only peanuts, no plant food! What? Day 28, I listened to Neko Ark's theme from Melty Blood. That's like the only thing of note I could draw from this level. That theme does kind of slap though. Day 29 only gives you three plants to use. I know the Primal Sunflower is supposed to be one of the best sun generators in the game, but I don't know man, I don't like using it. It just felt slow. I don't know if there's any validity to that, but that might just be my sun nut supremacy coming out. Day 30 actually took two attempts to beat, although that was mostly because I was fucking around with the Endurian. This thing's awful. It should just do more damage or be way tankier. It's just really sad. Day 31, we don't get to pick our plants. The only notable thing about this world is that these two dinosaurs want to fuck the shit out of each other. And to be fair, that is very notable. One positive thing I can say about this world is that it has the best Zomboss. Not visually, I was very disappointed when he came out on a robotic dinosaur. That's so lame. But this level, I somehow managed to keep an entire row of Bonk Choy alive for the entire thing, and they were just rocking Zomboss as shit. It was a really fun level. This world sucked. I really don't like sounding negative in my videos, but this was by far my least favorite world yet. Every level felt the exact same, and the dinosaurs just did not make up for that. This was also the quickest world by far. It only took me four hours to beat. The last two worlds for reference took 10 hours each. Oh well, onwards and upwards. Oh, looks like this beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. For a game about time travel, a beach is a weird thematic. Like all the other worlds are periods of time, but the beach is just a location. But after playing through this world, it makes sense. Big Wave Beach is set in a dystopian Atlas Shrug style future where everything sucks, all funds locked behind five pound microtransactions and all the zombies have tits. Now I know this is the world you're looking forward to because you all want to see me suffer, but just make sure to inflate my e- I mean subscribe to get me ever so closer to that seductive play button. Day one as always sets the scene for my newest round of self-inflicted torture. It's wild to me that it took them this long to bring water back to the game. The pool stage is easily the most iconic map from the first game, largely thanks to the endless mode. So it's just weird to me that they waited so long. The water here is a lot more involved than in the pool level though, with a shifting tide that can fully board wipe if you're not careful. Similarly to the icy winds in Frostbite Cave, I really like this gimmick. Sure, it makes the game unbearably hard, but just like the tender sexual embrace of a woman, it just isn't fun if they don't punch you in the stomach several times. Upon completing that horrendous analogy, we unlock the lily pad. For literally months now, I've been asked whether or not I'll be using the lily pads in this world, since it's kind of impossible without them. But in a twist of rare PopCap good games design, we actually don't need to use the lily pads here, as we can place nuts on existing lily pads and then use the plant food on the nuts to create more lily pads. It's a real slurp juice on an ape situation. Not using lily pads makes this world much harder, which is very unnecessary, but that's kind of the fun we're having here if you think about it. 
Day 2 shows off how artificial the difficulty in the later worlds are. Even beyond the irritating unique zombies and the ball busting world gimmicks, these later levels just shit out more and tougher zombies. Can you imagine back when you can unlock worlds in any order, picking big wave beach after Egypt and bringing your bloomerang into day 2 of this world? Day 3 is a tutorial for the last plant in the entire game that needs a tutorial, the chomper. This fella has such a clear visual gameplay identity that someone who has just picked up the game would have no issue whatsoever guessing what he does, as long as they've paid the £5 entry fee to use those luscious green lips. Day 4 is really pushing the limits of how little variety they can get away with in these early levels. I beat this level with no difficulty, but let it be known that these peanuts are purely for display here and are contributing zero to beating these levels. If the game doesn't want to do anything with this level, I will. I have a VOD channel. I personally don't know why anyone would want to watch hours and hours of me struggling through the game, but Twitch chat loves it and I've had countless requests for a VOD channel, so there you go. Look, I'll be honest, I've branded it as a quick and lazy upload channel, but it actually takes like 12 hours to render and upload these videos. So uh, please go subscribe so I can get it monetized and justify it so it feels better. Cheers. Day 5 is a conveyor belt level which teaches us how to use the tangleweed, which is a super iconic plant from the first game. You can really feel how much of this world is balanced around using this guy. Being down a tangleweed is a real ball ache. Did you know that the last time I went to a beach I got stung by a jellyfish? I didn't do anything to him but he stung me and my foot really hurt. And if that wasn't heart wrenching enough, no cute girls came and peed on me. I fucking hate the beach. Day 6 introduces the snorkel zombie. Due to the close range nature of nuts, these guys are absolutely nothing. The snorkel zombie lost his t-shirt in the transition to the second game. God forbid a fellow wear some swag. Day 7's already bringing the safety line back way too far for us to use. I'm not sure what the point of a safe word is if we forget it 5 minutes in. It was this level that I had a real grim realisation. The gum nut doesn't work in water. It basically means we're down one of our two hyper carry nuts, which is disastrous for this world. With this news, I was crushed. This world might be impossible. Now this is peak plant vs zombies right here. I fucking adored walnut bowling in the first game, and seeing it reimagined here is so cool. Consider my spirits high and my glasses tinted rose. We can definitely beat this world, no sweat. Day 9's Big Wave Beach's other type of gimmick level. Stages with weirdly redundant objectives. It sounds stupid, but I'll point them out when they come up. They absolutely do this on purpose. In this one we have a mold colony, but they could have just moved the safety line back, and it's functionally the same thing. This one's the least bizarre because it does change how you can use the leap pads, but it gets weirder. I love these levels, they're just quirky. Day 10's the level I've been most excited for since the very start of this game. It's the level we unlock the final nut for this challenge. If you thought the Primal Walnut was the last trick I had, you're a fool because I have one last surprise up my sleeve. The true silver bullet of this challenge, the bowling nuts. That's right dear shaggers, your eyes do not deceive you. My influence has become so potent I manifested peak plants vs zombies into one tangible plant. Now this guy's pretty fucking sweet, but I won't be spamming him on every level. Too much of a sweet thing and all of a sudden your piss smells like sugar puffs. Day 11 has a new player in the surfing zombie. Unlike other insta kill zombies, this guy's a threat, as even though we can just blow him up with our exploding nuts, he kills the lily pad underneath the nut as well and he leaves his surfboard despite being atomized on the spot. Other than that, this one was a sweep. Day 12, plan your defense. Looking back on the gameplay for this one really pisses me off because I only half spammed peanuts, saving 250 sun for explodo nuts, and I ended up digging up like 3 peanuts for more exploded nut funds. We beat the level first try, but at the cost of a sacred tradition. Day 13 is probably the hardest sun production level we've had yet, as we face 3 major challenges here. Producing 2000 sun, not exceeding 16 plants total, which sounds easy but remember that includes lily pads, and the unwritten challenge of only starting with a single row of lily pads with no dry ground. This means we had to dig up sun nuts last seconds to replace them, which the sun nut really doesn't synergize with as it needs to regrow back to its former size. This took a couple of tries and I was about to give up on this one as I had lost all my lawnmowers until I remembered I can just stall out a single zombie indefinitely and then this level became pretty easy. Day 14 doesn't let us pick up plans, but it does give us access to the walnut bowling and the OG walnut. This level took a few tries since walnut bowling isn't that great. 200 sun with no sun producers is tight, but we got it down with the help of lawnmowers. The bowling nuts may be really expensive and not do that much damage, and be way more fragile than all the other nuts, but they do fill a very important role in our force. Their plant food effect is straight busted. In fact, it's only now that I've used this plant food I realise how lacklustre literally all of the nut plant food are. Except this one, that a holographic condom doesn't serve us in offence. 
Day 15 is the first brutally hard level of this world, and it's also our second entry in the weirdly redundant level list. It's a protection level, where we're tasked to guard a row of potato mines, which is almost identical to a flower line level, with just the very small detail of the most annoying hit detection you can imagine. The major difficulty from this level comes to the fact that we're not giving a single lily pad to work with. We start off by trying to use peanuts to clear chaff until the tide goes out, but if you know much about peanuts, that didn't work. This level is unrelenting. When the tide goes out, it's manageable. The exploded nut can carry pretty easy. But it's towards the end of the level, when the tide wipes out the entire field and it pulls out the world's most annoying secret gimmick, a double final wave. This world has a horrible habit of chucking out a huge wave of zombies just before the final wave, forcing you to split your plant food between the two waves. The amount of times this move baited me into splooging all of my plant food just to be met with an even bigger wave is frankly embarrassing. After 3 hours of runs using lily pads, I was able to beat this level via an actual act of god which involved every single last zombie spontaneously combusting. But this was just a formality for Twitch chat, who didn't want to watch me repeat this level endlessly. I did go back and spend a further 3 hours running it back with the bowling nuts and zero lily pads repeating the level over and over and over again until I got the perfect RNG on the bowling nuts. In total, I spent about 6 hours on this level, which left me on my hands and knees begging that this is the longest level in this run, because I don't know if I can do this again. Day 16 is a conveyor belt level, which is lame and boring. Did you know that just after I finished the audio and script for this video, I lost all of the footage for Big Wave Beach, meaning I had to beat this world twice, on stream. So just know all of the bitching and moaning in this video, I had to go through twice. I'm such a fucking idiot. Going into day 17, I have a real bone to pick for my viewers. For months, I've had hundreds of comments saying that Big Wave Beach would be hard, but at least the infinite nullifies all the hard zombies. I've been told this over and over and over again, that the infinite plant food will carry me through this game. I thought that as long as I save my plant food for the infinite, the saviour of this run, I can handle the octo zombie no problem, like I've been told for months. And this is the day, his grand arrival. And does the infinite counter the Octo Daddy as was foretold? Does he fuck? He smothers my nuts and tentacles hentai style. Anyway, here's my potentially hot take about the Octo guy. Despite being much more tanky than the wizard zombies and the tentacle persisting after his death, I think the wizards are actually a much bigger deal than the Octo. The Octo Daddy is individually stronger, but the game never sends that many at you. But the wizards were coming at you five at a time. That said, he will still be an absolute nightmare. Day 18, and holy shit, this guy's peak. Purely design-wise, the Guacada has to be a top 5 plant. There's no disputing it, this guy's cute as fuck. Day 19 only lets us pick 2 plants, but it does give us the Sun Nut. See, I could easily wipe this level with Exploder Nuts. It wouldn't be hard at all. But it hit me when I started playing this level. If it's giving me the Sun Nut, I think I'm going to use it just once. And with my newfound Sun Production, I amassed an armada of cannons. This level was some of the most pure, genuine fun I've had in this game. Using multiple rows of coconut cannons to beat it is so satisfying, I fucking love this level. In day 20, I took the bowling nuts for a spin. This level had me hanging on by a thread the entire time, but somehow I was able to beat it first try. I hate using this analogy for the 100th time this series, but this level actually had me edging with how close I was to fucking losing the entire time. And when this big ass wave that is not the final wave popped up, I thought it was over. But the bowling nut plant food clutched up here, this thing is fucking insane. Day 21's a little flirt making me think we're about to play Walnut Bowling again, but nah, it's a demo for the most wasted potential in this whole game. What was wrong with her? Why was she replaced by this imposter? She's charming, she was perfect. They Princess Diana, our darling, and replaced her with this mingy testicle. When I started Day 22, chat started spamming, he's arrived, he's arrived. Which got me really confused when a scrawny fisherman popped out. But no, chat wasn't lying, this guy's an agent of chaos. Truthfully, he wasn't too difficult to deal with right now, but as this world goes on, he just gets more and more annoying. What I dislike most about him is that he's just so deceptively tanky. Like, I don't know if that rubber ring he's wearing is made of Kevlar or is full of cement, but he should not be able to eat a coconut cannon low to the face. Day 23 makes us protect three cob cannon wannabes, but unlike the rip for her pleasure ass homing thistle, I do like these bananas. And they seem to be weaker than the cob cannon with the upside of taking up one less space. Plus, they're really cute. The fishermen here are brutal though, but I must admit, they are kind of a clever use of the world gimmick. It's about here that I realise that the infinite barrier is a necessity for the rest of this world. Day 24 is another round of the greatest game of our generation, Walnut Bowling. And this one was actually kind of hard, which is cool. I'm just gutted this isn't a mainstay of the entire game, I love this shit. 
Day 25 is the return of the definitive worst objective in the game, the kill X amount of zombies in X amount of time. It just rolls off the tongue like pubic hair. You start with lily pads in this one, but you have to sacrifice them to the fishermen. I started using peanuts, but they don't even dent the fishermen, so we switched up to the bowling nuts, and they do marginally better. The fishermen are more obnoxious than ever here, with a full five waves of them appearing. The infinite barrier holds them back, but this is far from foolproof. One unfortunately timed surfing zombie can one-shot the barrier, permanently killing the infinite. I did beat this level relatively quickly after a sick walnut bowling comeback. Yo, walnut bowling! Oh, never mind, these are just regular walnuts. That's really rude, actually. I almost cleared day 27 on my first attempt after an insane walnut bowling halt, but I got fucked over by a fisherman. It then took me a further two hours to beat this stage. Spending hours on a stage you almost cleared first time is depressing. The hardest part of this level is the lack of safety net, meaning it's hard to set up peanuts or bowling nuts. And we really need to protect the lily pads that were given. In the final attempt at this level, I lost most of my lawnmowers and lily pads milliseconds before a huge wave of surfers come, meaning I was shit out of luck, until I hit a godly bowling nut trick shot, ending this nightmare of a stage. Day 28 possibly the hardest level in the entire game. I've been warned about the stage for months now, and it lives up to the hype. This level doesn't need much of an introduction, but neither does basically anything I explained, so here we go. This is the first stage in the entire game that I couldn't even clear the first wave. Let me just go over why we're so fucked here. Firstly, we can't afford any big guns, but that's always been the case here. Secondly, we can't spam the fuck out of exploder nuts. We can and must use a couple to clear big waves, but too many and we lose the game. Same thing goes for the Cumlet if we could even use him. The Infinite's a must on this level because of the Fisherman, but annoyingly, he actually permanently dies from the surface, so he does add to the kill count. And possibly the most annoying thing are these flimsy ass lily pads that we need to protect. But when the surfer penetrates us with a surfboard, it counts as killing two things because the lily pad counts as dying as well. All of this considered, we basically have to rely on the peanut, which is doomed. I really, really hate to say this, but this is the first level that's impossible without a little wiggle room. After much deliberation with chat, we come up with a few options. Firstly, leveling up some weaker plants. This is a pretty decent idea. The walnut and peanut aren't seeing any play these days, so it adds some much needed variety to the challenge. But we still have one more world to do, and I want to be able to beat the entire game only using level 1 plants. Using lily pads could take some pressure off the starting pads, but I don't think it's nearly enough to help. Chat suggested buying plant field or using power ups, but who do I look like to you guys? In the end, I just allowed myself to use sun nuts. With these, I was able to beat the level in about an hour using coconut cannons and infinites. But to be honest, I kind of regret the choice. I went back to beat the level using peanut spam, and some very minor, not so important, worth overlooking help from the enforcement. This plant is on a different level to the rest of the game. It's bonkers broken, but it does feel better to win this way since the peanuts got to do something for the first time since Egypt. I don't know how I should have beat this level, but when it comes time to put all these videos together for one final remastered nut video, I think I'll put some more hours in this level to find a better way to beat the stage, so subscribe to stick around for that. Day 29 is really weird. It's a plan your defense with really few lily pads and zero in the middle lane, but somehow it was just like really easy. I beat it using peanut spam. I can't really tell why it's easy, but that's mostly because my brain is fried from the last level. Day 30 and I can't fucking believe it, but this level is almost as bad as the last one. We have to protect a row of God's most precious creations, the guacadars. I almost put this level onto the category of weirdly redundant challenges. It's the same as the Potato Man level where they're basically just flower lines. But there is a major, major difference here. If a fisherman so much as hooks a crocodile, it's game over. The game design here honestly feels so hostile. This is, this is mean. I wish I had more to say about this one, but I beat it by repeating the level over and over and over again for about two hours so I could get the perfect RNG on the bowling that plant food which is a tough one because I had to spend almost all the plant food keeping up the infinite barriers to permanently avoid the fishermen. I had what I thought was a genius idea to let the Octo Daddies tentacle fuck all the guacadals so they don't get set off by the fishermen, but they shoot way too slow and don't appear enough for it to really work. The back half of this world has been fucking agony. Day 31's a boring level where you don't get to pick your plants. Fuck the homing thistle. The penultimate Zomboss is actually really cool. I love that you can clog its engines with Tangle Kelp and it has its own animation, that's really awesome. With Big Wave Beach down, that leaves only one more world remaining. Well guys, we're here. The last world in Plants vs Zombies 2. 10 worlds down and one more to go. I'll save most of my yapping for the end of this video, but I gotta say thank you so much for sticking around and getting me to 90,000 subscribers. 
We're just 10k away from the coveted silver play button. So subscribe to make a little goblin's dream come true. Without further ado, let's finish this long and hard adventure and reach our climax together. Day one, it's good to be back in the modern day. Our final world gimmick is time rifts. Portals that open up and shout out zombies from a set world. They're really cool little nods to many of the different chapters in our journey. This world does make the almost baffling decision to not use these in every level. In fact, they don't even appear in most of the levels. But I don't think it's an issue since this world uses a mix of zombies from all the worlds anyway. I can feel the difficulty already. I don't know if this level was even possible with peanuts only. Day two and we already have a really weird interaction caused by the mix of zombies here. When a torch zombie kills an exploder nut, it doesn't explode. I can't think of any other instant kill zombie that nullifies the exploder nut like this. You can polymorph it with the octopus or wizard zombie, and you can drown them with the fisherman, but this is the only true form of killing a plant that doesn't set off the exploder nut. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's actually intended, but it is kind of neat I guess. Another interesting thing about the modern day is this is the earliest I've struggled to beat a level. Why is day two of this world so damn hard? The mix of big wave beach zombies being overwhelmingly broken and the twisted villain in the torch zombie left me struggling at day two for a good 20 minutes, which isn't the hardest level I've done by far, but for day two, that got me sweating. Day three is a conveyor belt level and the arrival of another premium plant that I don't care about, as it's immediately overshadowed by the return of the iconic newspaper zombie. This fella must have been reading some serious self-help bullshit because the newspaper zombie's fucking jacked now. When you break his newspaper, he sprints at record speed with the immaculate form of that one kid who would run to lunch every day at school. Not only is he fast as fuck though, he rips plants apart like they're nothing. Between games, the newspaper zombie must have been doing some gorilla grade gear. Day 4 starts the new trend of beginning levels with a variety of imps. It's a cute little throwback. The little dragon imps, which I asked to see more often in the Dark Ages, are actually immune to fire damage, which for some reason includes the Exploder Nut. I feel like the Exploder Nut does more of like a force slash impact damage, but it's not a very big deal because peanuts can clear them very easily. The appeal of modern day, to me at least, is seeing how zombies from different worlds interact with each other. But did we really need a level based around the spinning dipshit zombie? Because that's what day 5 is. It's easily my least favourite zombie and the most minor inconvenience. There isn't really much more to say, I just despise this Beyblading loser. Day 6 is basically a custom nut level. It's a sun production level where we're giving sun tiles to use, but they're at the very front of the lawn. A tremendous downside if you're soft, but nuts are hard, so this one was really easy. I think it's pretty funny that this world utilises the Lost City's world gimmick better than the Lost City literally ever did. In this one, I placed a single peanut to hold the line, but in a tragic twist of fate, a rift opened up and spat out the peanut's natural prey turned predator, the Jester. Day 7, and this is like the third time we've seen the Octo Daddy, which is brutal. In fact, this level's sending out far more Octo Blokes than Big Wave Beach ever did, but at least we actually get to use the Cumnut to stop them this time. This level took about an hour in total. I said in my last video that the Octo Daddy isn't as bad as the Wizard because you don't have to face five of them at a time, but now I'm staring down five of these guys, it's got me feeling like the dream of a fisherman's wife. I can probably show that on screen, that's historically significant. Right, I love me some Walnut Bowling, probably more than anyone else. But it's gotta be said, Day 8 might have the best gimmick level in the entire game. Playing Bejeweled but PvZ is already cool enough, but having a skill tree is genius. In fact, these are the only levels in the entire game I went back to multiple times just to see what the upgrade paths were. 10 out of 10 game mode. Day 9 makes us use a swagless version of the Bloomerang. I hate this aubergine looking ass. We have another returning icon in this level with the balloon zombie, and I don't like his redesign that much. The balloon is far too big and the face on it is too neatly drawn. Lucky for us though, he's not geared out of his mind like his well-read cousin. Day 10 is a mix of the Far Future and Frostbite Cave Zombies. They're a very tough bunch, but we do get some power tiles to work with, which are again, tailor-made for the Goober Gang. I haven't mentioned it yet, but this world uses a mix of soundtracks from the first game, and listening to it got me thinking, damn, maybe old people are right, music was just better back then. Day 11 is a rush of pianos, prospectors, and all-star mechs. Weirdly, the piano doesn't make the zombies dance and move lanes. I'm sure it was probably hard to make it interact with zombies from different worlds, but like, why even include it at that point? This level brings us the Shadow Shroom. This guy is absolutely adorable. I'm not fond of the shadow plants in general though, but this guy is easily the best plant from the new world. You know that I think of it, why did they introduce a new gimmick in the shadow plants just for the last world? This could have been a great opportunity to bring back some classics like the Cobb Cannon or Doom Shroom. These basement dwellers seem too independent from the modern day. Day 12 has some real heavy hitters. Explosion proof imps, the shovel parasol combo, gargantuas, and even dinosaurs, but somehow it's the chicken wrangler that's the biggest nuisance here. The chickens really transcend their tutorial world status for me. They have to be one of the hardest zombies for my nuts to deal with. 
Just when you think you're safe, they appear out of nowhere and rush the house like a pack of chavvy youth. This level also limits how many plants can die, but 10 is just kind of a reasonable amount. It's not too hard. Day 13 is another round of Bejeweled, but this time it was hard as shit. I feel like you're on a timer to beat this level before newspaper zombies spawn and you lose on the spot. I did a lot of experimenting and decided that I wanted to upgrade the laser beam. Not for the beam itself, I think it's actually a downgrade from the lightning reed. Instead, I had my eyes set on my beloved electric blueberry. Chat was begging me not to go for the blueberry, insisting that it was bait and that the winter melon was vastly superior, but I stuck to my guns and went for the superior blue ball, and it worked a charm. After an hour of grinding. Day 14 was an exceedingly boring gimmick level. Since it's the final episode, let me give you guys my beloved shaggers a shagrot fact. Did you know that I'm stupendously bad at writing? I'm sure you've noticed that I use the same phrases at nausea, but you probably didn't know that I type even worse than I speak. I wrote all of this series on a big 60 page document with a total word score of 22. Also it's red because there's so many spelling mistakes that my dyslexic ass can't even read with all the blue and red lines everywhere, so I have to make the whole thing red just to obscure all the noise. Day 15 makes us protect two primal walnuts against an inquisition of cannons. The level starts with a single conehead and then four basic zombies all at once. It's not hard to deal with or anything, but it's just the first and last time the game ever does anything like this. It's weird. The imp cannons shoot right on top of the nuts, and the prospectors walking backwards are actually a threat to the nuts. The way this world creates conditions for long forgotten zombies to be difficult to deal with is probably my absolute favourite thing about this world. I beat this one by using an infinite barrier to stop the imps and flying zombies, although annoyingly the swinging zombies can still get over it. It took me about an hour to beat. Day 16 was a super fun conveyor belt level where you faced off against a gaggle of gargants. I actually struggled with this level taking me about half an hour to beat since the plants you get are like really random. Sometimes I'd start with only 3 winter melons which are the most important plants here and sometimes I'd get 6 of them. You get a bunch of big hitters to deal with the gargs like citrons and coconut cannons but as soon as you hit the second wave the game mixes it up on you and starts giving you straight garbage like the fat peat and pea shooters. Now that we've dealt with all the gargs, excluding the Dark Ages one for some reason, I can confidently say that the Neon Mixtape Tor Gargan is by far the worst. He was the only reason this level was even hard. Before I attempted this level, I let my girlfriend have a go at it, and I didn't pay much attention and she almost beat it first try. I had to snatch the controls away before she won so I could clear the game first time on stream. Day 17 is another duo level, and this time it's the Turquoise Skull and the Nerd, an odd duo tied by their autistic interests. While I was playing this level, I reminisced of when I was much younger and I was playing this game on my phone with my cousin in the park. The newest world in the game was the far future, and I predicted to my cousin that the final world of the game would be the modern day, and you would have to face off against zombies from all the worlds. Kinda neat that I got it right, but it is the most obvious conclusion possible. As for the level itself, unfortunately it's just one of those ones where the explosion that counters everything far too much. Bloom boys are always annoying, but they all appear in the middle lane, so a single tournament did the trick. Day 18 pits us against the surfer and the bull. This one's much harder as we get the 1940s London treatment with the amount of balloons trying to kill us. I was about to lose this level when an insanely clutch exploder nut goes off and wipes out most of the molars lanes. In retrospect, instead of spending all my sun on tour nuts, I probably should have invested in a single infinite, but I still did it first try. Day 18 is a tutorial for the most confusing plant in the game, the escape route. Visually, I assumed it was like the Tangle Kelp, but for land, so I used it that way, and to my surprise, it started spawning random bullshit. I only learned that it can swap its position while I was editing this video. You can't drop a mechanic that different to any other plant in the game, at the very end, without saying anything, and expect people to just figure it out. Day 19 is fairly cool, with sun tiles at the front again, but a selection of zombies that could ignore plants with ease. Since we have an influx of sun, I thought I'd bust out my dearest friend the coconut cannon for potentially the last time. I've already touched on the music in this world, but man, that last wave music is perfect. It does a fantastic job of conveying the feeling of the final leg of a journey. Day 21 brings back one of the last throwback zombies, the All-Star. He's so iconic to the game that I didn't even realise he was missing. He has a new move where he charges head first at the first target he sees and kills it. When he runs, I think he's the fastest zombie in the game. He breaks the sound barrier, and by that I mean he looks really janky when he runs. Like, I thought my game was lagging, but nah, that's just how he looks. This level wasn't too hard since we can deal with instant kill zombies very easily. There was an extremely close call where a balloon zombie was about to get my ass and I had no sun but a stray exploding that saved me. Day 22 is another round of Bejeweled but requires half the matches of the last one and doesn't spawn newspaper zombies. Please let me know what the design philosophy behind having difficult level spikes in the middle of the game and then far easier levels at the end because I just the game does it so much I don't get it. 
Day 23 is just Big Wave Beach, including the Snorkel Zombie, which is pretty funny. This level was hard, but I came in clutch with some really clean sequencing and beat it first try. Day 24 introduces us to the last new zombie of the game. The, uh, I think it's supposed to be a football fan. But football fans where I'm from don't really do foam hands, they do racism and domestic abuse. We get power tiles, but arranged in a way where we're never going to get more than two uses from them. The zombie selection here is really weird. We have the piano zombie, who still doesn't work, and we have the bone zombie, which is... <laughs> whatever. The new imp can get kicked by the football zombie, which is really cool. It might be the first time we see two zombies interact like this together, and it's either a reference to garden warfare or vice versa, which makes me really happy. Also, this level gives us six power tiles to use, and one plant food, which is weird. <laughs> Day 25 is really cool. We start off with a full defense that spontaneously combusts, and we have to use the carrot to bring them back. In my mind, this fully redeems the carrot. It's useless on its own and in real gameplay. But the fact it gives us such a unique level is really cool. Also, what the fuck is up with these pool floaty things? I see them all the time in Content Farm Sludge, but why are we only seeing them five levels from the end of the game? It's so bizarre. Day 26 is filled to the brim with big boys. The amount of instant kills in this level made it way too easy to blow everything up with a hardened cherry bomb technique. But I still believe that the beehive mech is the most unfair bullshit in this game. Day 27 is our last round of Bewilderment, and this time it requires the same amount of matches as the very first time we played it. Day 28 is a sun production level, and I used the Moonflower. I know, I know, it's not a nut, but hear me out. We could easily clear this level the same way we always do, by busting out the sun nut. But this is our first and last time in this challenge to take the Mercadamia nut out for a spin. I have been dying to use this cute ass fella ever since the first episode. And now three levels from the end of the challenge, we finally get to use him. And he's not very good. It's a roided up Endurian, but you know what they say about Polish turds. I don't really get why he's coated in jelly. Putting small nuts in jelly sounds like a prank designed to permanently disfigure someone's teeth. But he does look like a gothic cutie, so I like it. But for a premium plant that costs two exploder nuts, not being able to deal with a cone head is kind of insane. It doesn't help that this level's full of zombies that count on his regeneration, like the all-star, the wizard, and the captain. It took a few attempts to beat it, when we could have cleared this level normally in about 10 minutes. Overall, I'm very disappointed with the Mercadamia, despite how cute he is. But it's almost solace to know that I probably wouldn't have used him anyway if I could. Day 29 is the tomb level. There's a lot of tombs. And the tomb raises here. Which are cool. It's a simple level and a neat gimmick, and it would have been my favourite of this world because it's kind of silly if it didn't include the loser zombie. Fuck this guy, dude. Day 30 is the last challenge of this game, as for some reason, Day 31 is always piss easy. Here, we have to protect a row of flowers that are very close to the front of the lawn. In total, this level took me about two hours to beat, but I took a very relaxed approach to it. Because one, it's the last challenge of the game, and I wasn't in a rush. But also, someone made a video beating this level with nuts only, so I knew it was possible. I quickly caught on that the infinite can cheese this level really hard, but looking back, I really baited myself doing this. As nuts can just play in the first three lanes of the lawn really easily anyway. Day 31, the very last nut upper level of this challenge. We get the stupid bouncy things to deal with again. I used the bowling nuts for this last level because I just love them so much, but they were pretty irrelevant. This level only had two waves and they were both kind of easy. After one last round of Exploder Nut, we close out the game with a fairly uninspired boss rush. Which is pretty lame, I was hoping for a rooftop Zomboss. But I do like that everyone kind of gets their own final Zomboss experience. And with that, I have beaten Plants vs Zombies 2 with only nuts. 11 worlds, 312 levels, 38,000 words, almost 100,000 subscribers, and 6 months of my life later, our journey ends. And what an adventure it was. I chose nuts almost arbitrarily, only knowing the ones from the first game, and I can't believe we had such a good roster to beat the game with. We had a nut to deal with flyers, a nut to deal with chaff, a nut to deal with instant kills, a nut for sex appeal, and a nut to deal with literally everything the game ever had to offer. I promised that when all was said and done, I'd rank all the worlds in the game. So here they are, least the most favourite. Lost City, Jurassic Marsh, Neo Mixtape Tour, Big Wave Beach, Dark Age, Frostbite, Far Future, all three tutorial worlds tied for second and modern day. I loved each and every world this game had, but I think modern day was such an incredibly good throwback to all the worlds we've beaten, and I have a special place in my heart for the first three worlds when the game was easier so we can get away without using the busted brothers. Lastly, while the credits play out, I got some closing words. 
I listed all my goals I've had at university on post-it notes and put them on my wardrobe, ranked by how difficult I think they're going to be. And at the very top of that list was to get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. It was a feat I never thought I'd be able to achieve, but I knew I'd be lying to myself if I didn't include it as my most wanted goal. I know I say thank you for subscribing in every video, but I could never truly let you guys know how much it means to me. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching my content. I actually bumped into one of my biggest YouTube inspirations the other day, Josh Strife Hayes, and I got to show him my insane YouTube growth. And honestly, I don't think I've ever been more proud of myself in my entire life. I'll be coming back to Plant vs Zombies. I have a video lined up for the first game, but I want to make videos on some other games first. In fact, if you're watching this video within the first week of its release, I'm probably streaming my next challenge over at Twitch. I'm beating Terraria only using the piss book. I'm really hoping you guys check that video out when it drops. And again, thank you all so very much for watching this and making a little goblin's dream come true. Cheers. Oh, hey, this song coming in the mail today? Did someone come in the mail today? No, oh, cause someone came in the mail today. Yeah, I did. Twenty-one.